Yo, today... Today's a bit of a sad day, yo. I mean... <laughs> there's a lot of light coming in first, actually. I should probably take care of that. Um, I still have my curtains home because, like, it's so light outside. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll just enjoy the light. But, like, it might overbrighten me a lot. Maybe I have to, like, you know... Maybe, 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 maybe that's better. Maybe that's better like this. But, um... Before I, before I get to that, it's, it, it's a bit of a sad day. Uh, Prince Philip passed away, but I also just saw that DMX light. Um, I wasn't like a great connoisseur of his music, but he has some songs which like I greatly enjoyed. So, <laughs> unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. What is fortunate though, is that we have a new stream. Is that we have another day of another stream. Let me see if I can like adjust the light a little bit. Um, so like this is this is kind of where a um, where a uh, what is it where a webcam really falls short of like a main shooter sort of thing like if I if I was able to use this thing right here um, or any other camera other than a webcam it would probably be able to like deal with this so yeah we kind of we're kind of stuck with this hope it's not too bad <laughs> it will probably go away as it gets darker over time um, yeah, I'm not set up. I'm not set up for the light. I'm set up for the darkness. The darkness inside the room. But yeah, I hope you all doing alright. Welcome back to another Friday stream. Today we're starting out with just chatting. Um, and then we're going to have to make a choice. We're going to have to make a very big choice. Do we go into Among Us or do we go into Apex Legends? Because um, honestly, I already had a good time yesterday in Apex Legends. I really enjoy Apex like right now. I think it's a really, really cool game which might just become like the multiplayer game that I've been like hoping to find. Uh, I know it's a Battle Royale, but they're introducing new game modes as well, and I think that of the Battle Royales, this is one which can actually, like... See, I, like, like, I was not a big fan of Battle Royales, okay? Okay, come on, other folks. Come on, other folks, you can do it. I was not a big fan of Battle Royales. However, I've kind of confer I've kind of been converted by Apex. Like, I'm not going to, like, jump on Fortnite. I'm not going to jump on whatever other Battle Royales are out there. No, no, no. Apex it is right now. I just love that movement system. I just love the flow of it. Uh, the gunplay is pretty damn good. I just like it. I just really do. So, that is another possibility. Um, because, like, the thing is with Among Us, I would love to play that new map. But the thing which I feel with Among Us is, like, when was the last time that we had, like, <laughs> 10 people to fill a lobby? And with that map, you really want to have a full lobby. Because, like, one on four, oh, the Impulse is going to have such a good time. Hmm. They're just going to have the time of their lives with it. So, you know. I also posted up in the Discord whether anyone was down for Among Us. Um, I haven't really gotten any responses with that. So, if you guys keep telling me, like, oh man, I really want to do Among Us. It's like, yeah, but we gotta make... You, you, you gotta show up. <laughs> if you don't show up, I mean, like, we can't really do Among Us. So... Anyway, other than that... Video will be out tomorrow on the main channel. And, like, what I'm gonna do now is... Because, like, I'm getting, like... My workflow, or not, like, no, my, not my workflow, my, my work requirements for, like, university are so uneven that basically, like, this is very easy to manage because I just say every single day I have two hours off for, like, streams because it's very easy to take two hours to block two hours off for something. Um, and most of the time, like, no work or no, uh, what is it, no lectures or anything happen in the night. Sometimes a test maybe, but, like, that's been, I've been able to keep that away for, like, many, many times. Um, so it hasn't really happened, like, m most ones this year. Um, so, I can do streams quite well, but, like, when it comes to videos, which do require a lot more time, if my workflow for, like, university all of a sudden requires me to, like, be gone for a day, so, like, let's say on the first day I had, like, no time other than just, like, work. And it's, like, it's not necessarily work, it's just a lot of meetings, a lot of, like, lectures and stuff, which is a waste of time. Absolutely waste of time. <laughs> I'm so glad that it's, like, all recorded away from home sort of thing, or, like, recorded and then, like, done online so I can just, like, play back to jump speed. Saves me a lot of time, no travel time either. Fucking love that. Fucking hate not being able to go outside, but I love having, like, efficiency of time. Uh, so, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was talking about, so, like, basically when it comes out to streams, I can pretty much do them because, like, they, they happen between, like, a set, between a set time and they also happen, like, at the end of the day. And most of the time, at the end of the day, pretty much done with what I need to do. Um, videos, on the other hand, most of the time, they really, really differ in, like, the amount of time that I need to spend on them. Uh, some videos are done very fast, some videos are done very slowly, um, and with, like, how the work time of, like, university, like, fluctuates, like, insanely much, it's really, really hard to plan. That's why you hear me say a lot of times, like, oh, no, no, it's gonna be out today, it's gonna be out tomorrow, and it's not out for, like, a week. 
So what I want to do right now is with this situation, move away from, oh, I'm going to say when something's going to come out. I'm just going to post one main channel, one gaming channel, and we're just going to switch that sort of thing. So it's like main channel, game channel, main channel, game channel, and we'll just see like how frequently I can keep that up. That is sort of like my plan. Uh, I am a lot more on point right now with the uh, stream archive. So right now the new stream archive video should have gone, oh no, not yet. 12 minutes, 12 minutes still to go until that should go live. So that's kind of the plan with that. That should just continue to like upload every day. Maybe skip a day whenever like I'm really busy. So, um, but yeah, so that is that is keeping up to date. And that is pretty much the plan when it comes to when it comes to the piece of content. That said, I think I'm gonna start up Apex because uh, I really, really enjoy playing that. I want to do some more. <laughs> like, oh man, oh man, oh man. I just like playing that game. I just really, really do. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's probably just that, like, it's a combination of many, many factors. First of all, we have this thing where the movement system is just really, really sweet. And I find that with Outriders. Uh, I've been keeping up with Outriders. I've been playing it. I'm kind of a couple of hours in. Um, I think I should be getting there more or less pretty soon. Um by completing the game probably around the weekend i'll have it done and I'll, I'll i'll make a video about like my general thoughts on it long story short on outriders basically is that i think <sighs> okay th there's two things there's two things which i feel when it comes to outriders first of all i don't want to give them too much shit but at the same time i do because <laughs> the thing is okay so first of all is that I would say when Outriders comes out, like when Outriders came out, it's like the fair, it's like a brand new entry in like the looter shooter genre. It's like it's rather new. It's rather like a new thing. They gone out and did their demo thing, and I'm kind of like, well, you know, uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. It's a new game. At least they're trying. At least they're giving us something. However, one thing which we should not forget is that this is a Square Enix game. <laughs> Square Enix published this. It's not an indie game. It's it's a game by like a AAA like publisher, and it's pretty much like a very very costly game as well. With sixty bucks, it's not like it's cheap. So actually, like, uh, like I I've constantly been judging this game as like, you know, it's new. It's <laughs> I can't judge it too harshly because like it it it's a new thing. But at the same time, it is. It is kind of like top of the line sort of thing. And the thing which I find when it comes to when it comes to playing it, as I said before, I don't know. I don't feel like this game really knows what it's trying to be. It's kind of a cover shooter, but then also a parkour game. So it has the cover shooter elements of Division, but then it adds like this ability stuff where you fly around the battlefield and the entire idea is like feel powerful and blow things up however because of that you have something very conflicting if you want to play this as a cover shooter you're going to be absolutely fucked because the ai is kind of intended for you to be this overpowered parkour-esque destiny warframe style character uh, so it will like flock to you and it will like it will, it, it's it's way more aggressive than something like division and it's way more like moving around than something like division so in division what you can do is like you have cover set up and it took me a while to get to, to get into this, but like once you get into division, you like it's very very clear. It's like how do I move? Movement between cover is like really really well done. Your abilities are perfectly timed. So like you you can go and grab a grenade, you can like place it accurately, you can toss it there. It's like it's it's made for the cover shooter. It's made for like uh, you playing behind cover and then moving over to the other cover and like all that. Like it, it, it's very well done. Here you're gonna have shit where AI constantly spawns behind you. And yeah, it constantly storms you, but you can't get out of that storm. So the moment the, the, the moment they're onto you, you're you're gonna have to like use your ability to get them away, um, which makes sense if you still have your ability. But like most of the time, people are just using their abilities the entire time, or at least I find myself using my abilities the entire time. So it's like if you want to go and make it like a bit more parkour, a bit more Warframe Destiny esque, then you must really add some things like allow people to jump, allow the, the, the movement system to be a little bit more smooth. And that isn't the case. It is still very janky. It still feels like, like I'm turning the camera very, very slowly. And it doesn't feel nice. If I can't jump over like such a like hump in the road, it's like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, so this big difference between and having the, the the movement system of a cover shooter, but then uh, like having the AI and kind of like the idea of like, oh, we want you to parkour. It's so weird. It is so weird because also I've tried doing it as a cover shooter. However, if you do it as a cover shooter, it's just very, very boring because enemies are also not really like some are rushing behind you, but others are just staying back because they want you to move around, use your ability to move forward and turn around, use your ability to move sideways, that sort of thing. But it's not really intended to go ahead and be Oh yeah, let us go and like, like let us go and charge to you the way that uh, division does. So, 
That's what I find when it comes to when it comes to that combat system. I'm not enjoying it all that much. But even so, I mean, the story is kind of like, nah. But I mean, we all know that the story is going to be kind of meh. It, that's kind of the same way when it comes to Gears of War, when it comes to Call of Duty. Uh, the story is, made, is most of the time not really the most important part. However, <laughs> like the game, the gunplay, that tends to be really good. And I don't really think the gunplay here is all that fine because I don't really like the combat. So I'm kind of like, yeah, great. <laughs> So what am I playing this game for? And that's why sometimes, sometimes it has its moments where it's like, it looks good. But a lot of times I just think it looks kind of, it looks data. If this thing came out at like the PS3 era, it would have looked amazing. Like people would be like, wow. If this came out like very early PS4, it would have been kind of mid range. And like, it's still kind of mid range. So, um, I haven't been able to, uh, to catch the recent streams, but I'm guessing you're not a fan of Outriders. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. What's up, Therese? How's it going, man? Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Big Show. How's it going, guys? No, I'm not. Like, um, as I said, it's it's the combat I'm not a big fan of, and then, I mean, the story. Not <laughs> it's it's such a weird game. There are bits where I like it. Like, I, I'm not gonna say it's an outright bad game. Uh, I 100% feel that it's a game which you can play and have fun with, especially when you put the world tier down. It's fine, but like that's what I'm doing right now too. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm playing it. Uh, I'm playing it uh, like off stream. I'm playing it to um to just like get for it sort of thing and see what it's like um <laughs> but then what i found is that uh like i just set it back to world tier one because sometimes like battles mostly would be perfect and except for a few which would just be outer utter shit and like i just couldn't bring it in me to like yeah deal with that uh i'm exhausted honestly spend the last week or so fighting off a virus damn i hope it's not the coronavirus i hope you're uh <laughs> I hope you, uh, you called it, uh, better fires. <laughs> uh, I don't mean that way, but I mean, uh, I hope you know what I mean. Um, also, wait, hold on. Does this not move me with me? Oh, that's weird. That is strange. Why does this thing not move with me? Does it not do that on these things here as well? No, here it does. Right. It's only here. Misha, Misha wishes me ill health, Sanj. <laughs> nah, I know what you mean. I, like, I, I think I've heard that the UK is doing quite well when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, like, uh, what is it, vaccination and stuff. I heard you can play at low world tier, and then you can put it to your max and collect the mission rewards. Yeah, you can. But honestly, I, I, I just don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. Though. So, like, let me, uh, let me show you from, like, the stream of, um, uh, of last, uh, of last week. As well as, what is it, a couple days ago. See, this is why I love having the streams here in Archive on YouTube. This I should have done this years, fucking, yeah, like, fucking years ago. But let me see, because this has been a while since I... When, like, like where was that? Like, it was kind of at the end. I died a couple times here, idiot. Let's see here. So... Let's see, was this it? Yeah, this was it. Okay, so th th this was the battle that like made me like lose interest. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what it was. Just a really bad fatigue and uh, weakness. Uh, constant dry mouth and runny nose. Damn. Well, I hope you're recovering like quickly because it's 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 no fun. And I don't, I, I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> I played one mission beyond the demo. I'm glad it wasn't Game Pass. It is entire, like it's 100% a Game Pass game. So this right here is, um, is a mission right here. Uh, like, uh, duh. It's a mission right here. Um, but yeah, what you, like, what you find, uh, like, what you find in this mission is if you go over here, a lot of times, like, the gun, like, like the, the battles aren't that hard, but sometimes they get insanely hard. That's because, of, that's because of, like, how the AI acts. So, like, right here, you can see that the AI is coming forward, the enemies are grouping together, which is something which Division never does, because why would enemies group together? Because it's a cover shooter, but this game kind of wants them to group together so you can, like, come in and fight them but right here what you find is that you have these guys which are kind of like swoop behind you uh which is like these guys here that are swooping behind you there like that doesn't make sense on a cover shooter like kind of a cover shooter generally tends to be the way that the vision would work is that you would have to like go sit down right here and these enemies would kind of like spawn behind here and you would move your way forward and only if you like really push which which like seriously you would never ever ever do in division if you know what you're talking about or if you're like overpowered you you'll push um 
then, like, if you then push, then these guys will show up behind you because, hey, well, why are you pushing? Why are you pushing, man? Why are you pushing? But this game does. And then, like, you're wondering, like, well, why, why am I pushing here then? Why am I not, not waiting here? Well, that's because these enemies are just coming together. And, like, the goal of this game is also to have these abilities. And that's kind of, like, conflicting. So, like, what, what you find is, like, I'm coming forward. This time I already know that right here we have these enemies, like, shown around. And then these right there, you see that they're like there's a group right here that's kind of like around here. So you'll you, you'll use your ability, which again is kind of insanely overpowered. Um, now, let's see. Like it, it's kind of unfortunate that, that, that I sit in front of like the, the health bar, but you can see my health bar is 100, 125, 77, 60, 48, 0. It's like it just goes like that. It just literally goes like that. It goes so fucking fast, and it's like it's literally all over the place. So, um, I think I got into the battle here. Also, Retro, how's it going? It's Hi, Trigon, how's it going, man? How are y'all doing? Uh, yeah, feeling bad now. Still not 100%. Well, make sure that you, like, take your time to recover. Because, like, seriously, right now is definitely the time. I mean, the, the last fucking year has been the time to make sure that you're very well recovered. And you're not, uh, like, you're not overdoing it when it comes to recovering. So, let's see. Uh, or, like, undercutting it. I don't know what I'm going to say. But anyway, um... So yeah, this right here is like a little bit further. Uh, we like I think that this was the first time I ran through it. So what you find is that for a cover shooter, you never really run that far, like that much around. Watch me get Corona next week. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, you see these enemies are charging, which like that isn't all that's all that's that isn't all that special. I mean, uh, what is it? Um, Division has that too. They, they also have uh, explosive or or melee units charging you. Uh, and then kind of the goal is to, um, what is it, is to deal with them. However, right here, okay. So, where am I going right now? Yeah, I, I needed to find cover, I think. Um, been spending the last week having fun in Destiny 2. Oh, damn, nice. Nice, nice, nice. What have you been up to with um, Destiny? So, right here, like, look at this. Here is a ledge where I cannot run up to. I can't jump onto it. I really need to go to the left, which makes no fucking sense. Especially when it's, like, a game which... Like, look at that open space they give me. But anyway, so, like, right now, I thought, like, I'd beat it. And then the, the big boss comes around. And then it's like... Okay. So, what do we do now? What do we do now? Like, you see how, with how much ease, like, you actually go through these enemies? And then the big boss shows up, which... This boss looks exactly the same as, like, another boss which I defeated in two shots at the same, like, difficulty. But this one isn't the same sort of, like, difficulty because fuck, fuck it. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And then he comes with, like, a bunch of melee units. You can be like, okay, well, that's, I mean, that's a challenge, right? But it's like, like, look at this. Look at this. It, it all of a sudden just ramps up from, like, super easy to, like, kind of hard. And it's like, it, it's so weird. There is so little consistency. And you can see that right here, I am full health. Full health right now. Full health. 15% um, health, sort of thing. It's, it, it's, it goes all over. Like, look at that. Like, how does that make sense? <laughs> it is all over the place. It is all over the place. And for a game, in order to, like, min-max, in order to work with him, be like, oh, yeah, this is kind of what I want. This is kind of where I want to go. Or I want to, like, build craft. Or a game where I just want to sit back and relax, turn on my brain, sort of thing. Kind of like Warframe, where... You also just like you don't really like you don't always think about like I'm min maxing, but you most of the time just play. You want to have a certain consistency. Either it's gonna be hard, or it's gonna be easy, or it's gonna be like easy and then hard at times, which is kind of predictable. So you know that that's coming. Here it's just all at random, and that's just because I think this game doesn't really know what's trying to be, and that's why I'm not really liking it. How's the multiplayer in this game? I actually haven't been able to try it yet because it's only been uh, like on consoles. Crossplay has not been very uh, like useful, and at the same time. I haven't really seen that many people play it. I think not, like, not that many people like to stream it either. <laughs> I mean, oh man, I don't know who said it, but it was like a couple, uh, like two days ago when, when we were playing Outriders, someone was like, yo, can we talk about like another topic than this game? Cause it's kind of boring. <laughs> so Retro says, sorry about not showing up lately. I've been super busy. Dude, I hope you've been busy with good stuff, man. I hope you've been busy with like working on some good stuff, improving life. Like that's good, man. Yeah, I've decided that cover shooters are just not my style. I can I, I can 100% agree with you in there. I do think though that the vision is one that doesn't that gets it quite right. I really really enjoyed the vision and the vision too, but it took me a while to like get in. I've been working on my social life. Hell yeah, dude, that's good to hear. Keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. But yeah, like, oh, it is not a cover shooter, but it has like it is like it is not 
entirely a cover shooter, but it has the movement system of a cover shooter. The covers aren't for you. Well, 90% of the time they aren't for you. And then 10% of the time they, they shoot a hunter to BB for you and how dare you be charging yourself into battle because now you're gonna die. <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of out, uh, outriders. And I'm not saying that's bad because you can still like adjust the worlds here, which is very, very easy to do. However, that's not a $60 game. If I compare that to if I compare that to something like Ghost of Shima, fuck. I like Ghost of Shima seems like a league on its own. Other than other than this, and I I think that this is kind of weird. Like, if this game, as uh, Big Show said, this game is like a Game Pass game. If you have Game Pass and you have a couple of friends that played, fuck, go for it. Um, but yeah, it's like it's weird. It is just um, another thing. Like near uh, uh, like one thing that I was been wondering about. Like near Automata was also released by um, Square, published by Square Enix, and I'm kind of like. This game feels like it's kind of an indie game, but it's like a Square Enix published game. So. Well, Shagam, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm good. Pretty much all the time. And then I random, like, the game will throw something, and it's like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and it's not predictable. It is not predictable. So, like, that's what I find, is I just don't get an enjoyable experience out of it. Because it is so weird. So, like... I will have, like, there is no indication for which enemies are going to be more power. Like, okay, there, there's an indication for which enemies are more powerful. But you'll have, like, five enemies. Um, the first three, or, like, six enemies. The first three, you just shoot without, like, two shots, they're dead. Like, literally in the same level. Then there's one which, like, there's no difference indication. All of a sudden, like, he is, like, ten times more powerful. It's like, okay. Then the next one is, like, easy as fuck. And then the third one is kind of, like, anime. It's like, what's the logic? And again, like, the... I don't know. It's it's not for me. I would not really recommend it because I don't enjoy the combat. I just don't. If it was a cover shooter like Division, I would enjoy it. If it was a uh, ability shooter fighter like Destiny or Warframe, I would enjoy it. This mix doesn't vibe. I do think that, they're, that the world levels, the world tiers are a great way of allowing people to adjust their difficulty. Uh, I think that the synergies with like the weapons and the um, clothes and stuff that you get are really good. Uh, I don't like I didn't I don't like it all that much when there's like stats like connected to clothing. Like look at Cyberpunk for example for, for example. Cyberpunk with like their stats to their clothes were just ridiculous. I didn't like that because the thing is, Cyberpunk was all about like create your own character, make it look like you want. And then it's literally like you just go by the numbers and like build your character based on like the numbers and then you look like shit because you just wear whatever is most powerful. However, here in this game, it fits. And it fits because every single piece of clone that you get makes you think about it very, very early on already, like, what do I want? You do, you're you trained to not look at the numbers, which I think Des uh, Destiny 2 really does, like, it really puts you, like, look at the numbers. And a Division does that too, like, look at the numbers. This doesn't, because this is kind of more like, hey, yeah, you have more damage numbers, but you will have synergies with the things that you put on, which synergize with your... Guns and synergize with your bellies, and I like that. Like, for instance, I had a shotgun which I constantly used, and I still use, because at killing, uh, at like a killing shot, it will give me like 35 health, which uh, a decent amount of health. So that is really, really nice. I'll, I now normally I don't go shotguns, I don't like shotguns, but this really makes me change my gameplay style where I'm like, I'm rushing in or I'm shooting and I'm come closer and I finish my shotgun because it gives me more health. I like that. I think that's a really cool mechanic. Um, the story is just like, nah. And like when I'm stuck with like a meh story in a meh gameplay loop, it's kind of like meh. I mean, like I I'm still sort of interested in where the story goes. That's why I want to finish it. So, Nika, what's up? How's it going? So yeah, that's why I say it's a Game Pass or twenty dollar game. If this was like a twenty dollar game, and you could just get it with a bunch of friends, fuck yeah, this is fun. Um, in a group of friends that's hanging out, killing things, and playing solo is boring entirely. And then, like, the story when you're just playing with friends isn't all that, like, important. So I think that this is a really cool multiplayer game. The thing which I, I am, like, which I think is kind of funny, though, or interesting, is that I don't see that many people stream it. <laughs> it's like, all the people that I know that got it, it's only a handful of them that are still streaming it. And it's, it, this should be the ideal streaming game because it's cross-platform, it's kind of, kind of, like, battle, but... It's not. And I don't know. I, I can't pinpoint it, but it's it's probably because it's such a interesting, weird game. Also, Mika, good to see you, man. 
Uh, it's 2021 and we still have games that give us items that look like shit but still have the best stats. I mean, we still have weapon uh, degra degradation in, in, in fucking games, man. We have weapon degradation in games. Inventory management. Oh my god. This game, by the way, this game is supposed to... This game is supposed to have... What is it? Um, a solo... Like, this game is supposed to be very focused on solo and multiplayer play. But... And it's supposed to be not be a live service. But then it comes with... You can't pulse it. So, like, I've had a couple times where I was playing. I was like, oh, shit, I kind of want to pulse it. Because I'm playing by myself. I'm playing solo. But you can't. Which is like... Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> And then also you have this thing where your data is stored on their servers. So if their servers ever go down, you lose your game. It's like, why? If this is a solo game. So hopefully by that time you'll be able to download it and like actually use it. But I, I doubt it. I don't know. I've not, I've not seen a game do that yet. So um, how's everyone doing? I'm quite a rare. I'm quite a rare. Today's been, uh, today's been a fun day. I've been, been playing a bit of Apex. been playing a bit of Outriders. Um, other than that, finishing up some things. Tomorrow should be a new video. Uh, I've decided, as I uh, as I shall repeat, uh, because I said it very early on, um, that um, I will change my schedule with videos as to like one video on one channel, one video on the other, one video on one, and like we'll just like keep alternating. I don't have an exact plan for like a schedule. I wanted to make a schedule for the last couple of months, but literally my university load has just been shifting all the time so sometimes i find myself with way more time or way less time and i was like oh shit but i promised to do that thing let me hold on with this thing and yeah it's it's not going anywhere it's 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 still shit but uh anyway uh turn says better than last week retro says we still have minecraft oh man oh man oh man was there wasn't there something with minecraft that we were talking about like this week i think we were talking about minecraft this week somewhere god damn things are just flowing into each other <laughs> But yeah, like I would, um, I would love, to, like I would love to do Minecraft at some point. But as I said before, uh, if I if I'm gonna do Minecraft, I want to make sure that we do it right, that we have a community server. But also, I would kind of like to combine it with, let's say, Defton, or either or with Mogamu. Like there, there was a point in time where, uh, what is it, Mogamu and Defton? I was like, I was talking about them, and they were kind of like down to do a, um, what is it, to to set up a. Uh, uh, survival multiplayer together, but like it kind of faded, it <laughs> like many things do. Um, that's good to hear, Terence. Are you back to normal? Or are you still recovering? Has Terence ever been normal? That's the question. Um, I wouldn't know. I'm just playing Minecraft with a friend. <laughs> that's good. That's good. What kind of Minecraft? Is this regular Minecraft or something, something different? Have I ever been normal? No, not really. See that? See that's that that, that that's that's what I expect. That's what I expect. This stream, nobody ain't normal. Nobody ain't normal. We all, we all get. <laughs> we all our own, our own special, unique kind. Hashtag Misha's over party. <laughs> I was so. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, Mika. Uh, Vanilla, unfortunately, I really, I still really want to play Mollet. Honestly, like, I don't get the hate with Vanilla, man. I don't get the hate with Vanilla. Like, seriously, seriously, seriously. Like, what is the hate with Vanilla? I really enjoy Vanilla, okay? I'll put out, I am still not done with enjoying Vanilla. And I think it's just like, it's a really fun thing to play. <laughs> so, that said, though, that said, I need your help with seven. I need to have, like, okay, I got a question for you guys here watching anime. Is there any anime you're watching this season? And if, if there is, what are you watching? Because, like, last season we had um, uh, Reincarnated Slime, we had ReZero, we had, oh god, Dr. Stone. We had so many good anime in that season. Now that season has ended, and I just don't know what to, like, watch this season. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, is, like, what are you guys are watching something? I like Vanilla, it's an acquired taste, though. It gets old quick. There's not enough to do. Not enough to do? God damn, dude. Not enough to do? Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me, dude. I'll show you. I'll show you my, 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 my freaking, um, I'll show you my freaking, like, family server that, like, we started on, like, two years ago or something. I mean, like, we haven't played it in two years either. So, like, it was just the summer of 2018. We started playing. Literally, I was building a railway station. Like, I was building a network of railways throughout the entire map. So we could get to every single village and then have like our own little like transportation to it. Dude, there's fuck tons to do in vanilla Minecraft. It never gets old. 
I've been playing vanilla Minecraft since 2014. Fuck, I've been playing Warframe since 2014. Do I get bored? Good point. Let's move on. Um, let's see. Uh, redo of healer. Ooh, redo of healer. Let me check that. Redo of healer. My analyst. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, we're, we're not going to be watching traders because I'll just get bitch slapped by YouTube for that. But uh, blah, 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 blah. let's go take a look. Um, redo of healer. Let me go make this bigger so you guys can see it. Railroad barrel Michel. Yeah, I mean, the, the power at the end of the day is in the railroad. So infrastructure is important. Uh, while Kiaru acquired his powers as a hero who specialized in healing all injuries regardless of severity, it seemed he would walk the path to a great future. But what awaited him was a great agony. He's, he's, he was subjected to years of seemingly endless, hellish torture and abuse. Kiaru's healing skills allowed him to secretly collect the memories and abilities of those he treated, gradually making him stronger than anyone else. But by the time he reached his full potential, it was far too late. He had already lost everything. Determined to put his life back on track, Kiara released, un decided to unleash a powerful healing spell that rewound that re the entire world back to time before he began to suffer his horrible fate. Equipped with the anguish, anguish of his past, he vows to redo everything in order to fulfill a new purpose, to exact revenge upon those who have wronged him. Sounds like an interesting premise. I'm curious. It's got a 6.3 score though. Damn. Like how many how many episodes are it? It's 12 episodes. Actually that's oh it's it's already done. Fit sweet. I can I can go back and watch that. That's a fucked up show. Is it is it is it about as fucked up as uh God, what was this? What was this thing called again? Oh man, it was like with that huge teddy bear thing. Uh what was that? What was that? Uh Fuck, I don't know anymore. Drew recommended it to me, and now watch it. It was it was kind of this thing, this thing where uh, people would get powers where like when they found coins and then handed it into like some sort of alien that dropped it. I mean, again, it's anime. If you don't know what anime is, like this probably sounds super weird to you, but I mean, yeah, it starts with a G. It, 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 I know, like it's not gangsta. Which one was it? Like I. I think you know which one I mean, but I just forgot the title. 2020. Let's see, what if we just search G? Anime. Search. Let's see if we find something. No, it doesn't do that. <sighs> Let's see. There's gonna be a fucking long list. It doesn't allow me even. All right. So I think it was 2020 summer. I think like it was like last year or so. God of High School Reser. No, no. Actually, it wasn't last year. It was 19, I think. Let's see. Shoki Kino so did this anime, by the way. Shoki Kino Soma fucking died. I mean, it's still going, but seriously, oh my god, this is so sad. Like, the first season of this was pretty lit. I I, I actually really enjoyed this. But then the rest of it was just... Uh, like, they they took so long, and at the end, the animation just, like, really tapered off that I just, like, stopped watching after, like, season four or something. And this is what, like, five or six is around, which is insane. Oh, Tower of God, dude, I really want to see Tower of God season, uh, season two. Are they, are they gonna, like, is there anything known about this? I really don't know. But, like, seriously, Tower of God needs to have a next season. I can't wait. Bad Glagnir! There we go, that was it. That was it. The, this was also some fucked up shit. Is it as fucked up as this? Because this was kind of fucked up, too. This is, like, very fucked up, actually. This has got a 7... Actually, why does this only have a 7.0? I mean... That makes that makes a 6.3 of that one look better. Yeah, Gleipnir. That was it. It was actually kind of lit. I liked it. Um, let's see. Let's go to current season. Let's see what we have. So, Jujutsu Kaisen. 
anime I would love to watch, but they but they but they copy strike the or like they, they they claim the video because I showed the trailer. Um, it's blurred. That's why it's blurred on YouTube right now because uh, I didn't want to get in trouble. It's actually it was actually blocked worldwide if I wanted to show it up. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? I'm, I'm showing you a goddamn trailer. I wanted to watch you so bad, but now, but now if, I, if I watch you, I'd support someone that wanted to, like, strike down my video. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that. Let's see. What else do we have? Um, actually, has anyone seen Has anyone seen uh, this one? Uh, like, I started watching that. Because like, I think that this one has been going on for quite some time. Um... But I started watching this, this kind of like in My Hero Academia, but then like there's one person that just wants to like kill all the people at My Hero Academia sort of thing. Um, I thought it was going to be like an interesting thing, but it's just like a kill every single episode and just like it just got boring to me because I didn't really like the motivation of like the, the like murderer to like murder everyone. I thought it was kind of bland and boring. So uh, I'm watching a show on Netflix called Blood of Zeus on episode three and it's really interesting. Blood of... Zeus. Let's see. Talentless uh, Nana? Is that... Uh... Yeah. I've... Hold on. Let me go and open that in a new tab. Open like a new tab. Oh, yeah. Is that is, is that what's called in here? Is that... Is that it's, uh... I only know the Japanese names, basically. Yeah, the, yeah, that one. So, like, I watched three or four episodes of that, and I was literally just like... Um, every episode, like, ba like the basic premise is that like you have, I think it was like this girl. Um, no, so 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 what you have is like you have this high school somewhere. We're kind of like my hero, where like you have a high school of talented students, and they're being told you need to go, uh, like you need to become the protectors of humanity. But then you have this girl who's on there who doesn't have a power, but her goal is to, uh, is to like kill every single one of these students because that's the entire plan. Like, the, human the humanity that tells these students, these talented people, to, like, go and, like, you're being taught to become the saviors of humanity. Basically, just get told, like, basically, like, they're just sitting there to get killed because humanity's afraid that these people's talents will just, like, kill them. And I was like, yeah, that's just kind of, like... I was expecting maybe there would be some, like, character development. And th there might have been, there might have been. But I watched four episodes and was just kind of, like, the same. I was like, yeah... Not me. Not for me. So, folks, what's up, man? How's it going? Rip, I'm 40 minutes late. I mean, you're 40 minutes into uh, into the anime session, so... When it comes to Greek and Norse mythologies, I think it's fair real estate. Not very accurate enough, though. Uh, though, I don't know why uh, adaptions insist on changing mythology they're working with. I think that that's just kind of, like, a general thing. Um, I think, like, a lot of times, like... When it comes to stories, and especially, like, mythological stories, where a lot of times when it comes to mythological stories, like, they're based on some sort of tale that is, like, a... Fuck, what's the right term? A mythological tale. Um, where, like, a lot of themes you'll find across very, very different stories, very different mythologies. Um, and I think that what you find with that is, like, a lot of times the core premises are very important, but people take liberties with it. Like, look at, look at something which would be maybe modern mythology, which is kind of, like, the superheroes of the MCU or the DCU, look at how many times they change up their story, which I always thought was ridiculous. I really just wanted to see. This is why I never got into superheroes until our Avengers universe came around, uh, because the thing was, I just wanted to see what would happen. I saw Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and then they went back to Spider-Man 1. I was like, fuck, I already saw that. Why, why don't we just go on to Spider-Man 4, 5, and 6? Like, I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Same thing with like the Dark, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy. The fact that we had the Dark Knight trilogy, and then we had like then we had Batman versus Superman, but that was not the same thing. Like like that wasn't really the same Batman. And then practically the Joker was again. I mean like it, it was so weird. It was so I'm mean, like fuck. Just continue the story. Start somewhere. Start with the right story. Start with the story as, as it's supposed to happen. Just the same way that you might feel like just why can't we just use the mythology as it's supposed to happen and just build on to the camp. Because everyone's going to have their own retelling of that. Everyone's going to have their own interpretation. So I think that's kind of like down to mythology. The way that people want to approach it. And the way that people want to like go around with it. Because evidently we haven't watched Uncle Ben die enough. I know, right? I know. <laughs> uh, I like the different version. But I understand why some people wouldn't like it. Um, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff to, to work with already. To be honest, I think they only went to great aesthetic for sale value. I mean, 
they probably just went to the Greek mythology because then they could do this scene where, uh, follow the story where, like, Zeus puts, like, someone into a statue of a bull to be done some interesting acts by another I don't know what it is, Greek mythology, because it's kind of weird. Maybe we should adapt it. Maybe we should kind of adapt it, not entirely follow its script. Alright, let's see what Blood of Zeus is like. Um, when you phrase it like that, it's... <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Right, so it says here there's only... Wait, is this it? 2020, yeah, this, this should be it. Netflix? Um, this is all there is to it. A commoner living in ancient Greece, Herald discovers uh, his true heritage as a son of Zeus and his purpose to save the world from a demonic army. Um, Blood of Zeus, Netflix official side. The Dota anime. What is a Dota anime? Is that on here? What's it called? Have you watched a demon? Wait, there's a demon hunter movie? Oh fuck! I didn't know about that. Is it good? You search Dota anime, and you'll find it. It won't be porn, will it? I mean, I'll never know. Dota Netflix anime. The fuck this is real. I mean, there, there, there was someone recently that wanted to like look me up, look up a porn anime or something. What is what's up with the anime collaboration between Felf and Netflix? On February 16th, Felf's Dota 2 account on Twitter, Dragon's Blood. Dota Dragon's Blood. Interesting. Interesting. Not gonna watch the video because I'm scared now. It premieres on March 20th. I've not seen it. I've not seen it. But yeah, let's see this movie here. After a string of... Um, is this kind of like... Is this movie going to be a side story? Or is this like a retelling? Because a lot of times, like... I was super lucky to be able to see this in theaters that came out. Story sucks. The, the story is a continuation of the anime that ended last year. Being an adaptation of the train arc. You may recognize the main villain or the demon in his arc from the first season. Well, you did see him. He was the demon... Who his blood was given to the one who wanted to be tortured. It follows the manga's events shown of Oh man, so this actually continues on. Um this actually continues on on like the main on like the, the main story sort of thing. Curious. You know what? I'll watch it. Stories never think this movie didn't have major flaws. There were only little tidbits that could be found in anime regardless. Um I didn't know this was out there, and this is kinda of like a continuation, so I'll watch this. I'll watch this. We have Blood of Zeus right here. A commoner living in ancient Greece, Heron discovers this. Okay, there's like not much more than that. But it is fully out there. And it's an interesting, uh, interesting style. Curious, I'll watch it. If I, like... They have varying lengths of, of uh, episodes, but it should be right. Let's see, I mean, I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. Alright. I'll see if I can maybe watch uh, like watch one uh, episode of this and then watch um, the movie before like the next Monday and we'll, we can talk about it. I just finished Misfits. Oh yeah, that one was fun. Seriously, I have really really enjoyed that. So um, uh. uh What was it called? Was this it? Yeah, this was it. Why did I say Demon King? Dude, like, this anime is so fucking fun. So, you know how there are, like, stories which are just, like... You sometimes have anime, you sometimes have uh, movies where... You know when they're kind of bringing down the hero or, like, they're facing struggles because... That is what good story writing is all about. You need to have struggles for your character to overcome. And they need to be... They need to they need to be hindered by the uh, the environment. They can't be all too strong because if you make your characters too strong, that'd be boring. Well, you know, sometimes I just watch anime and I'm like, oh my god. For for instance, this is something which really plagues One Piece sometimes for me. And One Piece has some very good writing. So, 
even even good writing can have really bad moments and that's what i find especially because one piece is kind of like stretching the anime to keep up with the manga uh, or like like stay ahead of the manga sort of thing uh, but what I find is that a lot of times, well, like the way that the One Piece structure works is that the main characters come onto an island. The island has a bad guy. They encounter the bad guy. They'll have a fight. The first fight, they'll win. And then then the bad guy turns out to be like super more powerful. And then they, they lose a bunch of times. They'll try again. They'll lose again. They'll try once more. They'll lose again. They go train. They get more powerful. And then at the end, like, boom, they defeat them. Oh, yeah, we've overcome it. Um, which is a very tried and true like story method but the thing is is that I find especially because I'm currently all the way up to date with One Piece that whenever I have a 20 minute ed episode before I have to wait another week again for it to come out even that 20 minute episode I'm gonna see that the main character is just gonna fight and like I he powers all the way up it's like oh yeah we're ready to go Woo! and then just get smacked down because oh yeah we need to show that he is so much more powerful but I know that in five weeks no well not five weeks in a year's time um it will be defeated because that's the way the story goes i just i'm just bored i'm like this fight doesn't mean anything because i know that he's going to be defeated but i know that at the end of the day like the main character is going to win and i just get incredibly incredibly bored by that and i have that more and more especially when the anime tried to pull this week. oh my god they died no they didn't no they didn't. you thought they died it's like i did not think for a fucking second that they died because you know, I'm like that. So that is something which sometimes can really get on my nerves. And then you have this anime right here. This anime right here is about, I mean, like he's not that well visible, but it's about your, uh, your, 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 your average high school student, uh, the two day old or two week old, <laughs> uh, Demon King, basically. So what you have is you have, um, you have like, you, you follow around this Demon King who is, uh, who is this reincarnation or reborn uh, king of the demons or like the mo most powerful being in the universe. Like he got born two weeks later. He's like fully grown adult sort of thing. Makes no sense, but fuck it. And then basically it's just watching him be overpowered all the time. It's kind of like One Punch Man, uh, but they try to throw a little bit more of a story with it of like, oh yeah, he needs to overcome certain things, but there's never something he can't overcome. Uh, this anime is just One Punch Man with a slightly more serious side. It definitely is. And I like it. I like it. I mean, this is not something which I will watch all like all the time. If every single anime was like that, well, it will be boring. But just like once in a while, it's fun. Like I really enjoy it. I really do. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Tarana says, "Oh, another issue I had with the Blood of Zeus. It mixes way too much Judeo-Christian themes into it. It's basically Abrahamic mythology with Greek paint." <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! I mean, I haven't watched it, but I'll talk to you when I've seen it. And then, with, then, like, I'll probably agree with you, but hey. Uh, also, The Ways of House Husband is on Netflix for me, and that's good. A month old. The Ways of House. Let me see. The Ways of House. Husband. Kind of like corpse husband. <laughs> oh shit, that's, that's like full- oh man. Alright, let's see here. They do like great jobs with like their descriptions here. It's a very, very appealing image. Um, after disappearing from the uh, from the underworld, the legendary Yakuza Tatsu, the immortal dragon resurfaces after as a fiercely devoted, devoted stay-at-home husband. Season 1 trader, it has... Five episodes. Nice. This program is absurd, quirky, feel good. <laughs> oh man. By the way, they have more descriptions in, in for their episodes than they have for the entire series, basically. So yeah. Now why would you say that? Why would I say what? You know, I, yeah, I'm a streamer. I forget what I say the moment I say it. <laughs> That's why I'm arguing for my streams so I can remember what I said. Oh man, oh man. I am so happy though. I am so fucking happy though. I started archiving these things. Bridge to um, Terabithia is on Netflix. Is that like a bridge to like a terabyte, terabyte storage? You brought up corpse. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, mini corpse. I'm sorry about that. Mini corpse. <laughs> Honestly, I like the thing which I find with corpse is. 
I was actually su subscribed to him like at the start because I thought that the Among Us stuff was kind of funny when it came out, but I just kind of get tired with that entire. First of all, Among Us is kind of, eh. Eh. it's fun to play, but not like not much fun to watch anymore. And then, <laughs> and they have this thing where it's like, oh, he posted a picture of a hair, or like, oh, I, I hate that bullcrap. I absolutely hate that bullcrap. I I love, I love when you have, what is it? When you have memes of, uh, hey, PewDiePie, like, drew a very ugly picture of Sonic the Hedgehog and then try to sell it online as, like, a digital copy and it went almost for, like, $6 million or $15 million. People put down $15 million for, like, a digital crappy painting of fucking um, Sonic and then, like, PewDiePie took it down because he was like, fuck this, I, like, this is too much money. Um, I like that. I like that when it's done as a meme, but I don't like it when people are like, oh my god, he's, he, there is a clip of him, like, breathing into the microphone. Like, shut the fuck up. Don't, <laughs> there's no meme in that. It's dumb. But yeah. Speaking of something that ain't dumb. Speaking of something that ain't dumb. Uh, please don't remind me of how much stupid people, uh, how much people will pay for stupid art pieces. Uh, what about when he tweeted just a smile emote? Oh my god. And enough of that my during my college years. Oh man. So like one thing that I'm super proud of is this channel right here. Uh, this right here, I am so glad I've been archiving the streams. Um, it's like literally so so last so last year, last year, we were actually playing Anthem around this time, but like there's almost no recollection of this. Or were we playing Temtem? No, Temtem was even before that. We had already finished Temtem. But there's just barely any recollection. And right now I can like go for here and see like what we were up to. And it's so fun to see. It is so fun to see like what we were doing. Like you can see that like we kind of started out Terraria. I only have like two Terraria episodes, which I means it's been such a long time since we've done Terraria. But then like you go back and you go for like Warframe. I don't think I'm going to play all that much more Warframe because I don't know. The thing which I have with Warframe, I actually reached out to them. And I, had a, I had a little chat, but wasn't all that. Didn't really get much answers. Uh, um, or I reached out to someone at Warframe. I didn't reach out to Warframe, but I reached out to someone that's knowledgeable of their situation and didn't really get that many answers. It's not really what I hope for sort of thing. So, um, but anyway, so like the thing which I find when it comes to Warframe is that it's, it's just the same. And even though the new Railjack is supposed to be different and more accessible, it still doesn't entice me. And what I've also found is that whenever we play Warframe, Usually before, like, the numbers would insanely go up. Everyone was like, oh my god, you're playing Warframe. But now, like, now I just find that there's even less interest that we play Warframe. So, unless there's something, like, insanely good, like, a new cinematic story. If the new War comes out, I'll probably play it. But other than that, I don't know. I don't think so. But we'll see. So, yeah, but we have Warframe right here. Here we, here we started talking about Fallout. Oh my god, we had the Fallout thing. So, like, right here we have... Oh, Mika right here. Daddy Carlos. Here we had the Temtem episodes. This was right here. It was the very first Among Us time. Like, look at how short that hair is. Look at how, like, fucking, like, we, I didn't know anything about, about Among Us there. And there we have the fucking Twitch team. <laughs> Remember, I joined a Twitch team? God damn. God damn. God damn. But yeah, here we started with Fallout. And we had Among Us with Joey and Xeno. Oh my god, the Cyberpunk JoJo from Jin. Dude, remember when we were like super pumped for like Cyberpunk? Expected that to be amazing. So yeah, one first five among us. We had Definite Among Us. Uh more full. Like I love I love being able to like go back. Only thing I'm interested in Warframe at the moment is Suffolk off. Outside of that, meh. Well the thing that I found is that I'm actually also quite interested in like the new Warframe just to see what I look like. And I think that Sever skin also looks pretty damn good. But I don't want to farm that. <laughs> Could somebody please get me into the Warframe Creator Program to send me that one axis? I won't do anything with it, but just send me that one axis. That be said, uh, that said, let me see, uh, let me send you this new chroma look I made. Send it to me. Send it to me. Cause like officially the game is so appealing. It's just, I don't know. It's just not what it was anymore. But yeah, right here. Let's go. Let's go on here. Right here we have. Um, oh yeah, the spawn of the devil. Oh, Genshin. This, this, is this where Genshin started? Is this where Genshin started? This is probably where Genshin started, yes. Feature. Oh my god, that time you guys sent me over to like watch all sorts of VTubers. God damn, dude. God damn. But yeah, right here when I thought that uh, like I could actually buy a computer this year. Fuck me. 
More Among Us. Destiny 2. Oh my god, this was the Destiny 2 time. We've played so much Destiny 2. Um, and this is like the first full full Let's Chatting uh, stream. Like I, like, I love having that history. I love being able to like go back and like watch what we've done. Because like we've done quite a lot. And this has all been like this year. Uh, let me see. This right here, from here to here, has just been this year. All of this has been streams this year. Like, we've we have done so many streams. I, I love it. I really, really love it. So, I hope you guys like it too. The new, uh, the, the stream archive. I don't know if you go back to watch it. I I, I sometimes just go back to, like, watch some old streams and see, see what it's been like. Um, I also just enjoy the, like, Half the Moss podcast sort of thing. Uh, what Mika said, when he, especially when it comes to the just chatting things. Like, it's a great podcast thing. Especially if I just put it, sometimes I just put it out. Uh, Two times speed. I enjoy watching things at two times speed. But let's go to something else that I enjoy. Dragon Pog. <laughs> I like that name. I like that name. I like that name. Oh, man. Dude. What? I said I didn't want to play no more Warframe. But this looks lit. Fuck. I like this. I, I, I... <laughs> I want to play Chroma again. I want to play Chroma again. I like this. <laughs> this is a really, really good look. But, yeah, I'm not going to be tempted because what am I going to do? I'm going to stand around in my ship. You know what? Like, I'll just live action Warframe. I'll live action fucking Warframe. Okay? This is fucking live action Warframe. It's like. Just walk around like that. Idle a little bit. And log out. <laughs> that log out, that's it. I didn't want to use the Ice uh, Lich Ephemera with it, but it overpowers the skin anointing. Ah, uh, damn. It's a really nice skin. I like that. I like how it like brings out a dragon sort of thing. Um, it really, like, Chroma was supposed to be this dragon Warframe, and I can kind of see where they got it from at the same time. Really? Return to it in a year and it's actually something to do. Yeah, that rail jack up there wasn't really all that. I mean, they did right, but I actually recorded a playthrough for it, but the playthrough largely consists of me still not knowing what to do. <laughs> so, though saying a year is generous, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like a year. <laughs> Remember when it said. If, uh, that the new war would be out by the end of 2018. <laughs> 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 oh, y'all remember that? 2018 Tenocon, the new war? <laughs> 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 oh, man. This game done goofed. Yeah, Chrome is more like a dragon knight than an actual dragon. Yeah, he is. Like he, but this 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 definitely brings up the dragon of him. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, Christmas 2019. Uh. Don't forget it's Sever Deluxe was shown off in 2016 and there's just appeared into the into the air. Oh my god. Let's see. Do I still have some Warframe stuff? All those goddamn business cards. What do y'all think? Should I make business cards? <laughs> oh man. I remember the very first time I met Frozen Bowls. Frozen Bowls is a great dude, by the way. Super chill. I remember the first time I met Frozen Bowls. Was at like EGX. And he was handing. He was. Handing out the, the, these business cards. And honestly, like, I had never seen streamer business cards before. And neither had Sino or Laws. And we were just like, <laughs> What are these? <laughs> Why does he have cards? <laughs> but then, then we went to Tenocon. And let me show you the extent of the problem. Let me show you the extent of the problem, okay? I'm gonna hold pretty much everything that, like, is kind of like, Nub cards, okay? Here we go. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> That's not even all of them. 
Everyone had cards! Everyone had fucking business cards! Like, the one which I like the most, though, is, like, Hydroxid's. So Hydroxid had, like, a really good-looking card. Like, I love that. He was just, like, kind of, like, making fun of it. He wasn't, like... But everyone was, like, trying to sell their their own thing sort of thing. And it's, like, ugh. Ugh. I got so many business cards. And, like, I honestly... I honestly don't think that they help. <laughs> it's, like, y'all ever, like... Y'all ever started watching a streamer because you had a business card? Y'all ever decided to, like, go sponsor someone because you had their business card? It's, like... I mean, like, don't ask... Don't ask fucking fucking like business or marketing advice for me because like fuck me i'm not good at that i just want to have fun creating videos spot fuck this shit man uh i thought it was so funny how many of them make warframe comps? actually let's make the pile let's let, let's grab the pile let's fill up the pile and then let's see what we can find but code probably already redeemed let's see 10 vip 2018 um <laughs> <laughs> oh my god fantastic oh it's all that warframe stuff lovely 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 y'all want to be a warframe partner here is a sticker you can you, you can have it you can have it you can fucking have it welcome to tenocon 2017 welcome to tenocon 2018 Welcome to the third Tenocon. Actually, they cheaped out on the paper. This is like this is like hard paper, just kind of like soft paper. <laughs> but they, but I did do better batches. So like this was like the badge we got for like the the the, the next year. Hold on. This is like the first year badge. So it was kind of like a piece of paper and like a piece of plastic, but everyone like signed it. And this right here was like plastic but like a really fun thing that they did <laughs> a really fun thing they did was um right here at the back there was like codes codes for like exclusives like in-game items uh, exclusive tentacle platinum sigil glyph and display that everyone got on their badge okay so you could go and like fill this in because you had an attendee however you'd have to wear this all the time <laughs> And you had a lot of creators that would then take pictures, which their fans would post. And the idea was that like this badge would ha would ha would hang in around your neck all the time like this, but a lot of times it would just be like that. And then it would have pictures on social media with these codes just on there, <laughs> and people fucking snipe these codes. It was fantastic. It was just, I loved it. I loved it. It was so well thought out. Oh, actually, this was quite fun. This was uh, this is Paris. We had a uh, we had a little like photo shoot booth there. That was like the one day I went to Paris for like a Warframe thing, which was kind of fun. Like, it did get me to like different places, which was cool. So. Let's see how we all have. I was from the 70s still do Warframe stuff. I think from the 70s has gone like variety, but I haven't seen a stream in a while. Tagestray started doing other stuff. Um, I don't know if he streams that much anymore. We have... A 3D character and creature, creature artist. I don't know when I got this card. At some point in time I did. Big Jim. I think Jim still does Warframe. Because I think he's... He, I recently saw him get a Warframe house. I'm not quite sure. But I think he still covers Warframe from time to time. Shoal. Shoal doesn't do Warframe anymore. As far as I'm aware from um, Jim. Exia Rose. Don't know. I don't think so. I don't think she does Warframe anymore. But I haven't seen her stream that much anymore. Um... Frozen balls. Misha was a furry confirmed. Didn't know you had an issue. I'm impressed. Well, that's the thing. When it comes to when it comes to all these business cards, I meet so many fucking people. Well, like you come across so many fucking people. I remember I just be standing there talking to someone. Legit. <laughs> Legit. I'd be standing there talking to someone. And like we're just having a conversation. We're, 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 we're just having a conversation, you and me. Someone else comes along is like, here, here you go, here, have a business card. It's like they just fuck off, and I'm like, who the fuck were you? <laughs> what about this card? What am I doing with this? Right, let me just like keep it in the pile and never look at it again. 
<laughs> that is legit. I've got so many of these cards. Um, but yeah, let's go for more of them. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Great. Stop streaming for reasons. So, yeah, that is that's all that bullcrap. After that, you get creature drawn by. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, this beautiful piece of magnets. Actually, I can stick these magnets on there. Let's see if they actually stick. I don't know if everything is magnetized. I don't think everything's magnetized, but I think that is. Fuck it isn't. It's not. <laughs> that part is. So yeah. That right there is Warframe. Enjoy it. Alright, now let's get rid of this mess. Oh yeah, the X for the Xbox. Alright, so yeah, that was uh how did we start talking? Oh yeah, uh, fucking Warframe 2018 announcing the paper is magnetic, but the individual stickers aren't. Well, the individual stickers are magnetic, but the thing is, if I try and throw it... If I try and throw it, like, on the wall right there, then, like... Oh, it actually worked. But you can't see that. I gotta get the angle right. So, like, you, you gotta get the angle right. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. Actually, if you make business cards, make them magnetic. Then people can, like, throw them at walls and shit. No, actually, make them stickers. Make them stickers. So you can just, like, people can just, like, start slapping them and, like, on shit and, like, defile the entire territory. Actually, forget I said that. I don't condone you defiling the environment with stickers of streamers you really like because you think it's funny. Um, that is an absolute waste of resources. It's incredibly not funny whenever, like, someone come, walks up to their car and their car is entirely full with stickers of, like, you know, think of a streamer. <laughs> Preferably not me, but <laughs> it's incredibly not funny. Okay. Actually, what's even what's even less funnier is uh, if you oh, survive by. That was a game war for a minute. They shut down. I should also have like a keystone. Oh yes, keystone. I remember that they made their hero shooter, and that kind of died too. Magnetic stickers for the fridge, unless they're biodegradable. Don't 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 grab stickers and like stick them on the foreheads of your friends. Don't grab stickers and like slap them. Like actually, uh, Glam Shadow Squad had like stickers, um, which he handed out, which is kind of fun, because like he he actually did slap them on like signposts and stuff, and then he would like it would also like you can just like slap it on your shirt or your face. Man, I love stickers. I want to have more stickers. Oh yeah, we got a like Warframe tattoo. If you want to tattoo Warframe on yourself, fuck yeah, please, I do. So, like, that's one thing where, like, I'm super afraid about when it comes to, like, tattoos. So, they're so permanent. I don't want to, like... Let's say that I were into tattoos. I would have 100% tattooed something, like, from Warframe onto myself. Because if I were into it, Warframe back in the day was, like, super much my thing. Now, I would just, like, no. Um, kind of want to watch you play BPM bullet per minute. What is bullet per minute? Is it kind of, like, some sort of, like, beat saber thing? All these fuckers soon are talking about Warframe, and I remember DE were working on UT 2004. <laughs> damn, damn. I would rather die than get a Warframe tattoo, right? But, like, I gotta be honest, there was a time where, like, this game was, like, really, really cool to me. And, like, tattoos have never really been my thing, so... It wasn't something that I actually considered. But I would have considered if it was my thing. Because I know that some people did it, and I was, like, super into Warframe. But yeah, that's something which like I'm just afraid of. I'd get a Warframe top. I mean, it, it could also just be like something that was relevant with you for you. Like, I mean, like the, the thing is, like I still have like my Warframe bottle right here, which like I don't really mind it says Warframe on there. Um, it's still like a sign, like the, the Falkyrie statue is there, so I'm not gonna get rid of that because it's still like a. So when you're getting a frog tat, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a tattoo guy, so probably never. Uh. So yeah, <laughs> it's just like I don't know. I don't like having like permanent changes, even though it kind of died down for me. The game is still pretty much uh, it's such a big part of my gaming life. I can see that. Like I still think that Warframe has like is until now the greatest impact a game has had on me ever, and I think that that is important to realize. Like the thing which I found with Warframe is that 
at the time, it was such a perfect game for me. It was such a perfect game, and I don't, I don't think that there is a better game yet. If you are somewhere at a stage in your life where you have a lot of time in your hands, you want to play a game, but you don't have a lot of money to spend, you can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours into Warframe. And it's a very good looking game, it has a very nice feel to it. It's just after eight years, I've done it all. <laughs> yeah, Warframe's still pretty good and memorable, but it really needs to get its shit together. Yeah, so. Like, it is good to start out with, but the thing which I found is it's just so unreliable in what it wants and where it goes. I already felt like up, up till 2015, 2016, we were, we really had, like, it really had a chart. It really had a course as to where it was going. And in 2017, they kind of like deviated it and it just kind of went everywhere. And if you are keeping track with this game because you want to see like where it goes next sort of thing, you want to keep up with it, like, you know, fuck, no, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you start playing right now, you're gonna have a good time. Fuck yeah. Um, and there's also just like part of me where like, yeah, man. It's like, y'all, like y'all are seasoned Warframe players, so 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 y'all are also just like, man. <laughs> I played it. I've been there. Been done. Been there. Done that. Like we all know. We all know where we're at. We yo. We all know where we're at. And also it's like, Mogama stop. Brio stop. Defton stop. Cole stop. Joey doesn't upload anymore. Sandy still uploads. Casinos exploring World of Warcraft Arbiters. It's all the people that I met for it were like kind of like my friends. They kind of stop. It's kind of like, huh. So yeah, I mean, you play a game for so long, it all to get it to get boring. I wouldn't necessarily say so, but at the same time, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I can still pick up a Modern Warfare too. And I'll fun with it, even though, like, the lobbies are really slow. But that's probably because it's, like, a PvP game. And, like, I don't expect it to constantly be the most insane game there is. Or, like, constantly be, 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 be engaging me. But at the same time, the thing which I find with Warframe is that... If I look at it in 2018, I don't feel that much has changed. 2018. Or, like, like let's compare Warframe at the end of 2018 to where we are right now. Kind of, like, two and a half to three years later. We have demos. But Deimos is just like another open world. And I mean like, credit where credit is due. Deimos is a very well crafted open world, but it just feels like another open world. It just didn't interest me. We have Railjack, but Railjack is kind of like... Railjack? Couple new Warframes. A few new quests, but... So that's kind of like, it, it feels not a lot has changed. I think a part of the issue is that currently that you need to sink quite a bit of time into to get into the newer of new of into newer content is rather than just dropping into it as uh, as and when you want. Yeah, I think that there that there is a bit of that. So like the thing which I found with Railjack, and I've always found this very very interesting, is that Warframe has fuck well we're talking about Warframe. <laughs> oh man, but so Warframe has at this like since 2017 since they introduced the open worlds they have very much pushed for the new player mentality they have very much pushed for bite-sized bite-sized content five minutes in and out let's go and they kind of moved away their long game and game player sort of thing with that where like the people that wanted to stay for six hours eight hours since the void was removed like there was no point in that anymore since the raids were removed there was no real end game anymore um Essential Sanctuary also could have been something where there could have been cool endgame, but like that wasn't really worth it. So they really pushed this thing where it's like five minutes in, five minutes out, and then they bring in like Railjack, which is like different roles, synergies between roles, long missions, team play, fucking everything we set like we wouldn't we didn't focus on. So like it's such a big shift that you kind of push your players away that would have been very, very interested in that. And what I find is if I look into Railjack. Especially because at the start it wasn't quite good. It was just one mission. I wasn't really interested in it. But even now, I'm like, they did better bringing in the endo and like returning it to mod systems. But I still feel that they're they're putting up this gap, this threshold sort of thing where it's like, oh, you have brand new resources, you have this thing, you got a brand new like install all sorts of things, and got to start from zero again, up to a certain extent, which I can understand because what they want to do is like hey we bring a new system y'all 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 are complaining y'all are complaining every single time that we bring in a new piece of content like oh man we done with it in a week so you know we bring you re new resources you gotta form all that shit so you're gonna spend months farming that and you're gonna love it because this content is like no actually not because <laughs> the thing is as i've said this before is that 
when Warframe was just like this one track, when it was just like the start short, no arc break, no anything. Everything worked towards like this one goal, which is like getting better with Warframe with the weapons and everything like combined together and it was always useful. And now, like, everything that I worked on with my Warframes is kind of useless because Railjack is new again. I got, like, I can only get there in Railjack ports. It's kind of like, okay, so... I not only like do I have to try your new game mode, which isn't entirely like the game I was playing, but at the same time you also want me to farm everything? Really? And then it starts to feel like more like a job than it does like fun. So uh rather than just dropping uh, let's see, plus every attempt to make an end game that they uh, they did them back down on and make easier because people winch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, entirely. But yeah, that is, uh, I mean, we all know what Warframe is that. We all know what is that. <laughs> so. A game which I have already been enjoying those Apex. I fucking love that. I never felt it like Battle Royale. Never felt it. But I just enjoy it. I really, really enjoy, especially now that I'm getting a little bit better at it. It's just, it's just fun. It's enjoyable. Um, I also want to get back into, um, like, we should do some more Spnautica streams. I've been really having fun with that too. So. And apparently, apparently next week, uh, Apex is coming out with New Offend, and then our Rise of Zero Dawn will be free on PlayStation as well. So, <laughs> gonna be good things coming up. And then we also have what is it? Uh, Near Replicant coming up. Yeah, I feel that the community is also what is what is holding Warframe back. So, how do you feel that the, the Warframe community is holding it back? Let me know. Because. One of the things which I've just found around Warframe is that the community feels lacking. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, the Warframe community was very, very... Nah, if you know what I mean. Or very much like, give me Warframe, give me Warframe, or give me anything else. Is that not a game? Fuck you. <laughs> like, they were very, very focused on Warframe, but they were there. Now, if I look at Warframe's Twitch, if I look at Warframe's YouTube, it's just quiet. There's way less people. If I look at Xeno, who constantly still does 10 o'clock in Arbiters, it's just no one. Like, the thing which I feel is that Warframe's went from a community where people are, like, excited to watch Twitch or excited to talk about, like, oh, what's going to be happening next in Warframe? Oh, let's follow and let's discuss about what's going to be happening soon. And, oh, what do we hope for this game to develop? Oh, we only know about this game. It's going to develop soon because it's an amazing game, but no one knows about it. All that sort of stuff where we were, like, super excited to be in on this. Now it just feels like people just kind of stopped caring. And you'll see channels grow. Like, the only channels that I see grow, the only interest that I see is when it comes to channels that, like... Talk about how do you, how do I get strong? How do I get, how do I build this? How do I level? Like that's the only thing which is interesting right now. So it's it's no it doesn't feel any more like a community which is there to see the game develop. But it's more like oh like utility. It's more like okay, so how do I get better? Uh, how do I get this? How do I get that? And no one cares really anymore like where the game is going. That, that that's the feeling I have. And I don't know where that's shared with you. Um, one of the reasons I can think of is that obviously at the start. They were very fastly developing. So 2014 had so many updates. And they had 2014. And then 2015, they were like two years in, they dropped the second dream. And that felt like an eternity between 2014 and 15 that they dropped the second dream. I think they dropped Arc Rain in between there. It's like you had... Oh no, 2015... Yeah, like you, had, you literally just had like a lot of updates, a steady, a steady year, and Arc Rain and second dream. Which is a lot. And focus system. So everyone was like, fuck, where can this go? And they kept revamping things, they kept adding things in, they kept adding reinforcements, and everyone was like, insane about it. So like, everyone was like talking about it, like, oh man, things are coming, things are coming. Woo, let's talk about it. And now we've just had like three or four years, ever since Sacrifice, basically. Where everyone's like, y'all keep promising things, but ain't happening, ain't happening. And then, like this entire speculation of what could be, is kind of supplanted with what could this thing that they announced be, and then it's it's like supplanted with what should have already been, and it's supplanted with probably not gonna happen. And then people just stop talking. That's what I feel. That's what I feel. The Warframe community is at right now. And then the only people that are left is like, yo, can I have this or can I like like how do I get build or how do I get that? Like I don't even think glyphs are all that exciting anymore. I don't like I don't know. I don't know. Things I want to see. Planet of Planet of Fury, more lore expansion, interesting frames, unique weapons. What we get? Tiny space fights that can be done in a day. Yep. 
Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> entirely, man, entirely. Oh, don't forget the excessive nerfing because things are too are, that are good uh, rather than focus on making other things better. Oh, yeah, the melee nerf. Fuck. <laughs> Didn't they just, like, nerf melee because people were using melee? <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh man, this game, this game! I'm sorry, but. God damn. Yeah. It's something indeed. <sighs> but I, I want to watch that. Like, I don't want to give them too much crap. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, they do their thing, and I've enjoyed it, so. Well, uh, well, they announced plans to literally respond to a question from Tech Potato saying, "Can we make guns better?" This, this, this is what I've done. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Can we make guns better? Let's nerf melee. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Perfect. Let's change the subject. How's your Destiny 2 progress? I've uh, I've completed uh, Beyond Light and kind of stopped Beyond there. Beyond Light. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Do I still have the install on my machine? Because, like, the, fi the thing which I have with Destiny 2, uh, like, I completed the campaign and then Jen tried to win me over for the PvE part. And I just. That didn't click with me. <sighs> Let me see. I might still have it installed. I have removed a couple of games to make space for, uh, what is it? Outriders, which was 60 gigs. And Anthem. So we could go and compare Anthem and Outriders. So. Uh, let's see. The ideas I mentioned, I also have the potential to seriously damage melee as a weapon type for squishier frames and people's defense of that was, well, it should be more risk for more reward. The reward being enemies dying quicker. Yeah, honestly, it's it's what it is. Um, what I find with nerfs is that people always say that nerfs are the end of the world, but yeah. I got bored after finishing the campaign, but found out you can unlock more abilities. Can you? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <sighs> Let's see, which is try for me a complete cop out would make changing melee utterly redundant because guns would be better. Yeah. Warframe's got some decent guns, but at the same time. I like melee too. Warframe, like Warframe spoiled melee for me. For other games, because like I love Warframe's melee. I hate melee in any other game. Even Apex doesn't have good melee. I fucking love this, this slice, and there you go. Destiny doesn't have good melee compared to Warframe. Division doesn't. Outriders doesn't. No one. No one does melee as good as Warframe. Fucking love that. But then they... <laughs> then they nerf it. But whatever. I mean, it's what it is. Let's see. Destiny 2. Let me go start that up. Bungie. Actually, let me go take you with me. Free. And uh, let's see. Another one. There you go. Beyond Light. Let's see. Got my hands on Foreign Exotic the other day. Oh, nice. Let's see what I still got here. Mad for me, but my friend likes it. <laughs> Honestly, like, this has been my biggest problem with Destiny is that after the campaign, I just don't know where to go. I know that, um, what is it? Jen fills this time with uh, PvP. So no, he likes that, uh, but I haven't really found my PvP in there. All 
Oh, maybe I should change this thing to Destiny right now. Because people are going to be wondering. <laughs> and just chatting like, yo, what, what the fuck are you just chatting about? This seems like Destiny. I'll change it to this. Actually, I've never gotten in trouble with, like, directories on Twitch. Oh, I'll, I'll say that, hopefully. Like, please don't report me to Twitch if, like, I'm five seconds longer in, like, a wrong direction. But, like, at the start of this week, I think, I was in talk shows and podcasts. <laughs> I was legit in talk shows and podcasts for an entire just chatting stream. And no one said something. And it was only because I was the next day looking at, wait, why is this talk show on podcast? Which made no sense. Yeah, here we are. Apparently 1201 isn't all that insanely good. A detailed patch notes can be found in budgie.net updates. So I can't even click on that. <laughs> why is that there? But anyway, let's go. Hunter. Always hear people talk about the categories. Never seen anyone get punished for it. No, me neither. So. But, I mean, I would assume... Is all they understand, and so we taught them. Sand eaters scattered, dust giants felled, ice reapers buried, siege dancers broken. Until we grew complacent, and Gaul drove a blade between our ribs, left us gasping. It's a traveler. Before the vanguard showed them that the light cannot be tamed. What? So a void blew up. Stepped forward, stamped the Red Legion into extinction. Instead, oh, big battle! I ran the banner and watched the city's victories dull our edge once more. Oh, it should have ended it is. They fattened us. Oh, it is like the Olympic Games thing. Oh, before they forced oh. us to lift up a murderer as our savior. Another cabal warmonger now leads a fleet off. Oh no. Did someone else? No more waiting. We will be there to put her in the ground. Oh, it's a battle. I thought it was going to be like, oh, the Olympic Games. Because they did that like last year. I actually didn't know there was a cinematic going to be here. Woo, sweet. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see what it's going to lead to. It's like, that's something which I find with Destiny. Like, I never know when it's going to be, when it's going to be something new or... Where to go to with with it? So. Loading screen. Loading screen. Fuck yeah. Oh, here we go. More cinematic! Yes, yeah, cinematic for me, cinematic. Even my people have a word for peace. Mm -hmm. But we do not use it often. Or lightly. I wouldn't have summoned you if I was not sincere. Oh, these it's are the big people. With the cabal. The Curious. darkness crowds the edges of this system. The hive serves it. You'll fall to one if not the other. My world did. Empress Kaitl, I'm sorry for what you've lost. We have all suffered. I propose an alliance. Cabal don't ally. They conquer. She betrayed her father to Gaul. Don't think she won't put a gilded knife in your back, too. My father was soft. He lacked ambition. As you do. Humanity won't survive unless the commander expands his horizons. Join my empire. You'll keep your title and gain a seat on my war council. With my army and your light, the Cabal will crush the Hive. Then, the Black Fleet. Bow. No. Okay. Alliance, join my empire. <laughs> Very well. Ready yourself, Commander. I'll sharpen my gilded knife and see you both on the battlefield. <laughs> that went from strange talks, man. Like, Alliance to join my empires. Bow to me. It's like that. I don't think an Alliance works like that. I don't think an Alliance works like that, boys. But curious, like, that's how he does is sometimes you just get, like, random things. That was the dumbest fucking diplomacy I've ever seen. A hundred percent. Wait, 
We're going into battle? We're going into battle immediately? Fuck. See, so, oh, so, like, Destiny's weird. Destiny's like, it's like, yo, have some battle. Have some content. But yeah, player or content, whether you want to or not. <laughs> I know, but it's kind of like I did not expect this. Also, let me make sure that I have my internet plugged in. Uh. There we go. Yeah. I'm literally gonna cry, bro. What's up, man? <laughs> Why are you gonna cry? I'm hoping I'm hoping you're gonna cry tears of happiness, not sadness. But what happened? My meme page got disabled. What? Why? <laughs> Epson chat boys. It's sad to see memes go. Damn. Let's see, posted some dude hitting Mickey Mouse from, from the back. And that was like rated for violence or something? Se Oh man, I, I I I was thinking about physically hitting. Maybe that's the case. I like to. Do. <laughs> oh man, dude, that's rough. Who doesn't jerk off to mice getting beaten? Up? <laughs> oh man, I do feel I do feel that like the internet right now over the last few years has been like a strange place, like the thing with like. To me, the internet has always just been like the Wild West sort of thing. Like, you can go and like do it, do, do pretty much. Like, you can find anything. And that's, and that, and that is the beauty of, um, uh, of what is it? Of, of the internet. Just being able to. Also, I think I got out of that, like, thing right there that I need to do. Now, do I find it again? So, like, the thing which I found when it comes to the internet, um, is that when it was out there, like, seriously, I think we all, we all grew up with internet roughly the same. Like the internet, like like you'd go on the internet and you'd find you'd find videos about the weirdest fucking shit, and you would have challenges with like your peers and be like, oh, I dare you to watch two girls run cup. I dare you to watch this. I dare you to watch all sorts of fucked up shit. But that was the internet, like, and we all reveled in it. And whenever you'd go into like like lobbies, Xbox lobbies, Xbox 360 lobbies, Call of Duty lobbies. Like, if there wasn't some kid just, like, screeching at the, like, during the entire match, like, it wouldn't be a good match. Um, but, like, that was the internet. Like, I'm not saying that that was necessarily good. It was just, like, that was the internet out there because that's the world out there. You have weird shit in the world. You have weird shit that people engage in and weird shit that people do. But I think that the problem kind of came when the internet went, went bigger sort of thing, when, when more people started adopting it. And I think it kind of came with this traditional view of it's media. Like, social media. That's a bit of a problem. Having traveled the, the depths of the internet, I can tell you with absolute certainty that good quality, hardcore, kinky, gay monster porn is nearly non-existent. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. But like, this is the thing. This is the thing. Like, I think I think it came kind of with a problem of like, you're calling it social media and then older generation expecting it to be media. So like, great example, great example, YouTube. YouTube is like, Remember, like, remember all the cool shit you could do on YouTube and all the weird shit? Like, remember Filthy Frank and stuff like that? Like, even if you're not the biggest fan of it, people still posted it. And it was like, there were people that liked it, there were people that didn't like it. Same thing with all sorts of things that are out there in the world where, like, you might not be the great... Like, like there's a fetish for pretty much everything. Like, should those fetishes be forbidden even if you're not into it? It's like, no, I, I, fuck, if, you, if you're not hurting someone, if you're not hurting someone without their consent, go ahead, like... Do do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. And like, if you find people that like you can, 
like, if you find an audience for something that doesn't hurt anyone, fucking go ahead and do it. But the thing is, is that people can't come and go come in here and they're like, oh yeah, it's a media, so it's like regulating shit. And then they dump their children. They dump their children on the on the internet. And like, go ahead, have a great time. You wouldn't dump your children in the wild. And that's the thing, like, people come from, like, television, people come from radio, they're all like, oh, yeah, YouTube will be governed, and people, YouTube will be, like, like, monitored, and perfect, and fun. Oh, my God, what is that, a curse word? It's like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> there is curse words in the world. People say fuck and shit, and all sorts of weird fucking shit. And the thing is, they do. So why the fuck should we fucking bleep that shit? Because you don't want to hear it. It's like, oh, because my children are watching. Why the fuck are your children watching my channel then? Children shouldn't be watching my channel. No, it's so dumb. It is so fucking dumb. And that's kind of what I think is happening to, to the internet right now. It's like, I remember when Elon Musk got like hit with a lawsuit for something he tweeted because that influences the, the, the stocks. It's like, you're spreading misinformation. It's like, there are tweets right now. They're like, this tweet spreads misinformation. Bitch, I was using Twitter. Like, if I was not using Twitter for this... I would have 10 different accounts, all different names, and I would just, like, fuck about with my friends. Like, I would have one account that would... I mean, like, I made a bunch of Twitter accounts. Like, we would just have a meme. I'd make a Twitter account for that meme and just, like, start posting and just, like, start referring to my friends and I guy. Like, oh, my God, have you seen that? And they didn't even know it was me, and I was, like, I was just kind of fucking with it. It's like, that's the thing that Twitter and the internet is for. You just fuck with it. And, of course, like, you can use it seriously, but the fact that people already assume that you can spread misinformation on Twitter... Like, how can you spread misinformation on Twitter when your first instinct on anything on the internet should be, this is probably some idiot writing it, this is probably fake. This is not real. That should be your first fault when you enter on the internet, you cannot believe, that you're like, 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 fuck, like. And that is what we've been seeing with the internet more and more, that right now, oh yeah, we want your, like, Facebook saying we need your real identity. All these phone numbers need that. Fuck, okay, I recently was on YouTube, and I discovered something fucking weird i discovered something fucking weird okay um let me see if i still have it here let me see here here i fucking have it oh my god this is like the weirdest shit you've ever seen okay this i was i wanted to watch a video which was age restricted and it said choose how to verify your age send us your credit card or use your passport share us your passport it's like bitch what i'm sharing my credit card or my password with youtube it's like no fucking way but it's like yeah, but we need to confirm that you're over 18, otherwise we can't show you this video. It's like, god dang it. It's like, I am one per Google search away from, like, the most horrid shit in the entirety history of, like, all humanity. I can watch that. I can look that up. And 16-year-old me, 15-year-old me could watch that as well. Like, children ain't dumb. They can find that, okay? So, like, what the hell are you trying to do? What the hell are you trying I'm not going to share my ID. I'm not going to share my password. Like, what the fuck happened to Stranger Danger? Like, it is so dumb. It is so dumb. I really, really hate this shit. Where people are trying to govern the internet. Trying to, like, maintain it. Like, oh my god, there can't be wild animals in the jungle. Oh my god, why why, why did I leave my child in the jungle and then get bitten by a snake? B the bad snake. Whoever manages the jungle should be shot. It's like, no one manages the jungle. Because it's the jungle. It's, it's wild. It's open. That's what the internet is. Ah, <sighs> man. Anyway. Can't believe this all started with my meme page being done. But like, that's the thing which we've all seen with memes. Is that, like, re remember when AMVs were a thing? Like, when you could just, like, post an AMV? And, like, AMV would just be, like, some music with, like, added up with all sorts of, like, shots from, like, anime series. Most likely Naruto and most likely Linkin Park mashed together. Like, people make that. Right now, it just gets copy strike, copy strike, copy strike, copy strike. I fucking hate that shit, man. Like, give me back my AMVs. <laughs> and that's the same page with, with, with these meme pages. Like, fuck. Like, people going after memes. It's like, goddamn, dude. Like, oh, yeah, no, this meme is way too dark and edgy. It's like, well, then the meme is not for you. Go find another meme. Oh, yeah, I don't like this this, this, this page. I don't like this community. Then the community is not for you. Go somewhere else. <laughs> now we have porn music videos. Well, in the case of people like Musk, being a high-profile individual and the head of several companies and projects, there is generally expectation of integrity. I mean, there is in business sense but like since when has twitter become business like i mean apparently it has and one could argue right now if you want to make money if you want to make money here's your surefire way to make money learn how to make a bot make a bot that whenever elon tweets something 
about crypto or about uh, stocks, you just take that cryptocurrency or that stock. This is not financial advice, okay? Let me be very clear. As I said, everything you hear on the internet should just be fucking misinformation unless proven otherwise. But just like, don't don't, don't think you get anything useful out of this, but you might, but don't, uh, uh, this is not that. But like, make a bot, scan Elon Musk's tweets for like whatever crypto or um, like uh, stock is mentioned, buy that, make that bot like instant, instantly buy it, and five minutes later sell it. You'll probably make a profit because people are fucking looking at that guy's tweets and just thinking he predicts the stock market. And actually it works because every time he tweets that, people just buy that stock. He just needs to post a fucking picture of a doge and fucking people start buying dogecoin. What the fuck is wrong with you people? I mean like legit, what the fuck is going on with people right now? <laughs> It's like, when do we go to Twitter to see what our stock investments or what our company futures will be? Like, legit, I'm like, I know it's Elon and Elon is trying to get some attention on Twitter. But like, let's just say that I was running a business. Dude, if I want to fuck about him on Twitter, I mean, like, obviously, I should probably not use a verified Twitter account. I would probably use one without my real name. But still, if I wanted to, it's like, why should my Twitter be tied to my business? Like, I mean, like, again, like, he did go with his person. Like, like it is a bit, like, it's a, it's a bit great. Because, like, he has tied a lot of his, like, companies to his name. It's very personality driven, which works very well. The personality is liked. Like, this is the way that you can run a company. Like, you can run a company which is very much, like, product driven. So, if you think about the latest Samsung phone, like, who the fuck is the head of Samsung? Who is running, like, the, the, the S20, 12, 13, whatever? Like, who is that? Who knows? Who runs, uh, what's another company? Sony. Who is the head of Sony? Who runs Sony as a company? Pff, fuck, who knows? That's very product different. So we know the PS5, we know the PS4, we know the Samsung fuck, fucking phone it is. But you know Steve Jobs, even though he's no longer with Apple because of circumstances. Uh, uh, we know Elon Musk and like these companies, like we know this company. We don't know Tesla necessarily because it's a Tesla. We know Tesla because Elon Musk. We know SpaceX because Elon Musk. And that's kind of like personality driven. So like you can go ahead and you can like build yourself out to be very product driven or you can build yourself out to be very personality driven. And a lot of times what you find whenever you create something which is very product driven, like you find that if you create a good product and people find it's a good product, like people will remember that company by the good product. And if you make a new iteration, people will follow you for that product. However, if you make a bad product, like you kind of lose your reputation. At the same time, if you keep on having good products, people just remember that product. Like Toyota Corolla, fucking the whole world knows what the Toyota Corolla is, but no one knows who's at the head of Toyota. But people know what a Toyota is because they know the cars. Thing is, you can also just tie it to a personality. And the thing with a personality is that they can boom off and they, they, they don't need to be expensive in the sense of Elon Musk going on meme review with PewDiePie, Elon Musk going and showing up in Rick and Morty, Elon Musk just like like showing off presentations about all his things like he can really be signal be boosted by all of the things that he does that like because this person like just attacks all that attention like all his products attract attention too that is amazing thing is the moment they get in hot water or the moment they say something which people don't like your products go down too so that's a dangerous personality like thing like let's say that the, the boss of toyota wants to like go and tweet some edgy shit so like it can go and tweet some edgy shit because no one will give a shit about him tweeting edgy shit because no one knows who he is. Maybe like probably, probably some people know who he is, but I don't. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, like that's that's kind of it. Let's see, memes are the only things that, that make other people happy. Well, they try ruining other people's interests. It's I think like I think it's very much this thing where people try to um, people have an idea about how things should be and they kind of want to like conform everything to it because like oh this is not the way it should be. I mean like we all we all have that in a sense. Like if we talk about video games. If we talk about um, the way that we want like video games to be, if we talk about like the way we want Twitch and YouTube to be, like we all push forward an entire like an idea of like, oh man, it would be great if, the, if this wasn't here. Like, I don't like reaction videos, for instance. I don't like, well, like I don't like these children videos, which are like these finger songs and shit, like the the, the weird crazy like Elsa Spider Man like fucking sexual children's programming. I hate that. I mean, it got removed part of it. But like the thing is, is like, like we kind of influence it in that way. And like, I'm pretty sure that there are people that are saying like, well, you know, do you really need to say, do you really need to like say certain words? Do you really need to like make a violence in the meme? Do you really need to have guns in your game? Can't it just be like water guns or can't it just be like, you know, finger lights? You know, you everyone just like has a finger instead of a gun and you just shoot and like a little light comes out of it. And then, then you know, like instead of like first person shooters, because isn't that too much violence? It's like... 
the thing which I find is like a lot of times what people find is that like they'll f they'll, they'll try to have you agree on something and then like because you agree on like one little thing like you'll agree on everything then that's kind of what they're pushing for and like one of the weirdest things is that like companies are going with it uh, but like that's kind of like the, the the thing of the time. Spider Man, uh, Elsa Spider Man trend can, can could be included in that. That was obviously this bad stuff. Oh man, it was. Eddie Ward, what's up, man? How's it going? Hey, long time no see. Can't stick around for too long, dude. It's great to see you. Nice to see you. Gotta go. So I, I'm sorry, but I, good to see you. Good to see you. I hope you, I hope you have a great time. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you around. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by very quickly. Um, let's see. Um, completely undermined by the fact that it's Elon the embodiment of dodgy practices, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, let's see. Uh, Twitter is good for not safe for work content and nothing else. That's my hot take. Honestly, Twitter was fun. Twitter is fun for memes sometimes, too. But not anymore, really. I I, I don't really go on Twitter. The fit thing which I find on Twitter is that it's just gonna dull um, a minefield. Because, <laughs> okay, so if I go on Twitter. So previously, what I would do on Twitter is I would go on Twitter and just post dumb shit. Even, even when I had my YouTube account sort of thing, and like I had my YouTube Twitter sort of thing, what I would do is just, hey, Cole tweets out something dumb, let me go reply, like, reply with like a snarky reply, and then like, let's go back and forth sort of thing, or oh, Gridark says something. Like, a lot of times it's just kind of like playing around. But the thing which I found is like now I log in on Twitter it's every single time people are just talking about oh this is horrible oh this thing needs to be cancelled oh I had a really bad it feels like every single person that goes on Twitter or like most people that go on Twitter and tweet about things either want to like shut something down or have a bad day and want everyone to know about it or both or just get bored so like it really like Twitter doesn't really give me anything where I'm like oh I'm going on there and like oh man I really learned something new today um so yeah um, to be fair, I don't think, uh, let's see, uh, good, see ya, see ya, same for you, bye bye. You should get into not safe for work Twitter, embrace the fap, oh my god. I don't get why you'd use Twitter for that. Cause like, why would you, why would you risk a fap where there is a chance that somewhere between there might be a recommended tweet, which is just like, oh, let's cancel this person because they said there weren't as infused like it's literally almost like a communism thing it's pretty much like it's getting to a point where you have this thing where like back in soviet russia like everyone would clap and the person that would stop clapping after like 15 minutes the first to stop clapping for stalin would be taken out back in shop because he wasn't he wasn't as as good for stalin as everyone else was because they stopped clapping right just after him because they had been doing this for 15 minutes and someone just needed to stop and that's kind of what you see with twitter it's like oh oh you oh you <laughs> You didn't like this enough. Fucking go die now. And like, oh man. But yeah. I have recommended tweets disabled on my head and not safe for work. One, also I just don't give a shit. Yeah. So yeah. And also what I find with Twitter is like, it's such a minefield. In the sense of, uh, I actually had, uh, fuck. I actually had like, a, um, uh, like half a year ago or like a year ago. I, I, I was so done with people being so not funny with things. It's like I want, like I want, I want memes in my life. I just want to have fun. And like every single thing was just like boring and uh. So I was like, I kind of said something like, I just, I'm sorry, but just please stop being so dramatic with shit. Can we just like go back to memes? Cause I just want to have fun. I don't want to. And like people legit got mad. <laughs> people legit got so mad. And even people that uh, that I had met in real life and people that I had spoken with, they just got so mad. They were like, oh, you should go and like. They didn't say you should go and fucking kill yourself, but they were kind of like going there. They're like, you should go and fucking shut up. You don't know anything. How dare you? It's like, dude, dude I, <laughs> this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Trinity, what's going on? What's going on? How are you doing? Am I late? I mean, you joined for a stream. We're still going. You're still going. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and I just don't give shit much because the artist migrated to after Tumblr. Oh, my God, Tumblr. Tumblr just like fucking killed itself. <laughs> Oh, that was something too. That was that was an experience and a half as well, man. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So yeah, it's something which which I think is, you know, it's kind of sad in a sense. Uh, thanks to Yahoo. By the way, Yahoo Answers is shutting down, which is actually not something I wish to share with a smile. Yahoo Answers is shutting down sort of thing because uh, yahoo answers now be still being used the more, more being used for memes than for actually like real answers and then 
Like that's some that that, that is something that's something with uh, which which I'm fearing. Yeah, whole answers. Uh, yeah, like, what kind of fucking moral look to that platform and fall? There's a place that needs to be fr uh, family friendly. Um, best Yahoo answers. Let's see. Like what kind of fucking look at platform is that? that there's a place that needs to be family friendly. Yeah, but like that that's what I feel with YouTube. Like look at look at what YouTube was 2011. Fucking it was just Call of Duty like post cats and Yeah. I don't really feel it was um Yeah, let's see. And reply girls. Oh man. Hold on. Let me see if I can get some of the Yahoo answers. Let's see. Because, like, Yao answers is shutting down, and it's just... It's just, like, there is some comedy gold in there, and why the fuck do... Why the fuck do... <laughs> They're so good. They're so fucking good. <laughs> Should I have sex with my hamster? <laughs> We have been looking at each other with very lustful looks lately, and I'm having <laughs> sex with it. Should I? <laughs> Are you looking for a one night center relationship? Because if you have sex with a hamster, it will expect a ring or a fancy cage. Are you ready to get married? Oh my god. Like, I am afraid that this shit, these days on the internet, will just will not fly because, yeah, but like, it's misinformation. If you die in Canada, you die in real life. <laughs> no, if you die in Canada, you go to one of the Canadian afterlives. Those who die in battle are sent to glorious taxes, where they ride forever shiny and chrome. Those who are just good and ascend to England, where there is always fresh tea and everyone is polite. If you die in Quebec, you go to France. Those who are wicked and cruel were born into the hell of Detroit, which are faced worse than death. Is it okay to build, beat my girlfriend like my butt? What the fuck? Personally, I think you should. <laughs> this shit is. Uh, I just drank a tall glass of lemonade and it made me more thirsty. I'm <laughs> pregnant. Like, this is gold. Why the. Like, I am fucking certain. I am fucking certain. Also, like, this is just a picture. This is just a picture. This could be, like, very fucking old. But, like,. I'm very certain that there is going to be people right now that are just like, yeah, well, you know, this is misinformation. It doesn't get you do accurate information. People are dumb and then people make mistakes and we can't have this. So it needs, to, it's like, no, this is the internet. This is the fucking internet. And that's what we need the internet for, for fucking questions like this. What is this? I, I like, I, I really don't have this prepared. Let's see. I swallowed an ice, ice cube hole and I haven't pooped it out. I'm really scared it's in stock. Like, they're just so good. They're just so fucking good. And, like, this is going to be deleted. Is it illegal to kill an ant? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Today I was walking down the street and there was an ant. There was an ant on a puppy, so I stepped on the ant and killed it. A police officer gave me a fairy dirt look, and so did a lot of other people around. Uh, around. So I was wondering, is it illegal to kill an ant? I'm super serious. This isn't a joke. <laughs> you stepped on a dog. Uh, 
I doubt it. There's a big difference between stuff that's obviously for shits and giggles and the deliberate misinformation campaign the far right has been up to for the last two decades. Well, so that's the thing is I don't consider anything on the internet apart from something like Wikipedia to be really trustworthy information. I don't look at Twitter for trustworthy information. I wouldn't look at YouTube for trustworthy information about like anything. I mean, like I would look for it for like tutorials on like how to do Photoshop or Premiere or whatever. But I don't get mad if someone trolls me with like, oh yeah, you can do this in Photoshop and I can. But like, I would probably, like, I would not expect to find the right answers about like, oh, how does, how does vaccines, how do COVID vaccines work? I'm not going to expect someone to, someone to tweet that out and like find, like, I, I don't look for serious information on the internet because I don't think that's a place for it. Just like here, this place right here isn't a place to like, you can find good information, but you don't expect it. And like, I feel that that's kind of like where we're going to, where it's like, oh no, everything needs to be perfect. It needs to be fact-checked and everything's like, yeah, I mean, sure, make a part of it. Make like the scholarly um, academic articles, like like Wikipedia has fact-checked, all that, like, like Wikipedia has checked by per refuse or sort of thing, like that's good. Yeah, the answer doesn't need to be. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the answer absolutely doesn't need to be. Uh, but yeah, it's shutting down, unfortunately. So we'll just, so, so, so we'll just be stuck with Quora memes. Do we have any good Quora memes? Nice ship. Say out, like, thank you. It really likes just, like, floating around up there. I should probably, like, move this mouse button there. Let's see. Quora question memes. Let's see. I'm, an, I'm a wealthy Nigerian prince. All I want to do is give people money, but no one believes me. Why? What should I do? I mean, like, these are just not that very good. What is this? I have no idea. Well, like, like, like these are far less good. These are far less good. If there isn't a article about Yahoo answer about how to take a horse cock dildo at nine thrusts per seconds, then it can oh, that can die in fire for all I care. I'm fucking not showing this. I'm fucking not showing this. I'm not gonna get in trip. There are questions about... Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh. Oh. They're great. They're great. I can't share any of this, because otherwise, probably Twitch will get me in trouble. It's like, why does Twitch care? But anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. This is because you asked on stream from... What is it today? Today's the 9th of 09... April 2021 20, at 1 hour and 55 minutes in for context. Right, there you go. So, I uh, I just I just sent you the uh, the the question about animal penises on um, on Yahoo answers. I have clearly stated that it says this is because you asked on a stream for the 9th of April 2021 at 1 hour and 55 minutes in for context. Just in case, just in case you decide to, oh, let me leak the DMs to like five years times and be like, oh my God, look what he shared with me. Because he's like, I'm like, okay, we have context. We have context. <laughs> I don't want to have some fucking Twitter rumor floating around and I'm sure like, like I'm sending like animal penises and shit to, <laughs> I think. Uh, so yeah, there is value in Yahoo Answers, but it's going down. It's it's being deleted. So we'll be stuck with Cora, and then we don't know. We can't ask our good questions anymore. We don't know what to ask. 
We don't know. I mean, it's uh, I mean it's me. I don't think there'll be any doubt as to why the fuck that's there. <laughs> Just want to be safe. Just want to be safe. Okay, that's always been like that's always been like my my worry sort of thing, especially when it came to uh, archiving my streams. Because like I don't I, I don't want to worry about what I say on stream because I just kind of want to be myself. I just kind of want to talk about whatever the fuck we talk about. But the thing that I'm always wondering about is like shit. What if I just like say something bad? But like like I, I was like I was especially worried when we would talk about Warframe. Like Warframe right here, and I'd say something like, "Oh man, I don't like what Byro Katira's brought here," and then like people would try to like fucking delete my Warframe account because that's a, that has happened. That has fucking happened, and also people fucking wanted me gone because I existed. Because <laughs> goddamn, life life is already hard enough. But welcome back to another day on the goddamn internet. Today, I want to talk with you about that one time that people wanted to fucking get rid of me because I existed. Actually, I should, I, I should, I should, I should, I should fucking. I got chest purse because I called him a disappointment in region. Dude, 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 dude. Dude, fucking. Fucking, fucking, fucking. Here's my commentary video about it. Fuck, do, do, do I have like commentary video music? Let's see. I think, uh, I think I might have it here. Come on, let's let's do let's do an old classic. There is literally a Reddit thread about how uh, about it. I, I was so miffed, dude. I, I fuck. Let's see. I don't know. I can't find anything very good. Alright, just 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 imagine like lose 70 Kazen. That's 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 the fight we're going for. And that's definitely not this, but <laughs> I should I should have some I should have some gameplay in the back. Just, just imagine like CSGO gameplay here, okay? So <laughs> Hey, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the internet. Today, let's talk about that time that I almost got cancelled because I said that Baros Kittir's inventory was not good enough, okay? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Literally, I said, okay, I went on Twitter because, okay, let me give you, let me give you some context to the story, okay? So, basically, what happened is Baro Kittir had his 100th Fissad. If you don't know who Baro Kittir is, he's kind of like this, this baby Baro figure who is very, very, like, enjoyed by the Warframe community. Uh, sometimes even, like, a little bit sexualized by some. Um, but Baro Kittir is our baby boy Baro, and he brings items to the game once every two weeks. He started out very strong, bringing very good items to the game, but then... Then he stopped doing that. He, he, he kind of just started bringing like the regular old stuff. No one really became interested. But then Warframe kind of hyped him up. Like he had his 100 fist and he would have great items. So, uh, you know, I, I just woke up. I, I went for my day. I didn't really do all that much, you know. Just getting for the struggles of my daily life. Because, you know, that's what I talk about in fucking, fucking, fucking commentary videos. Like what else do we talk about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the drama. Guess. Please leave a like on this video because fuck yeah, we need likes on this video. Uh, but, like we're going to get massively disliked because I'm going against the Warframe crowd. And as we all know, like my good friend Serenus, the Warframe crowd is fucking bananas. Like, I don't know. Like, seriously, like at least you guys know what's up when it comes to like Warframe. Like you, you guys are regular people you can understand whenever i talk about the game i'm not necessarily saying that like oh th this game should be cancelled or shut down or i'm not saying that this like i, I hate warframe and everyone that works on it like I I legit I, I don't but some people think some people think i might say it however however okay I'm just gonna say, it. just leave a like, just leave a like. I see a speed be leaving likes, perfect. And uh, I see that Tyrannus be leaving likes, but he forgets the K. But like, I I'm just gonna assume that means likes. Anyway, so the story goes here, okay? Um, why are the commentary figures always like never getting to the point? I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna emulate an entire commentary figure. Let me just like get straight to the point. So basically, what was happening? I just woke up, I just woke up a random day. It was like the one harvest of Barrow did, hyped it up. I went to Barrow and he had literally, literally, Literally nothing new. Maybe like one cosmetic. I don't even remember. It wasn't anything special. So I went into Twitter and said something like Barracketeers 100 Fissed. I don't know what the hype is. He literally had no has nothing new. This is not worth it. With a meme. 
I actually don't know exactly what I said, but I did, but I did say that there is nothing new, even though there was like one cosmetics that was new. And I got fucking fucking stormed. People saw blood and they just went for it. They went for me so fucking hard. <laughs> it was crazy. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Like, but legit. <laughs> Actually, let's just, but like, they literally went for me so hard, saying, oh my god, you're spreading misinformation, Barakatir actually had something new, dude, I thought you were legit, man, like, uh, okay, this is like the funnest part, there were like, one or two people that I was actually really good contact with, they were like, I mean, like, we were actually friends in a way, like, we were calling every single day, having, like, watch someone, like, tune in right now and just don't know that's a meme, and they're like, fuck, he's like this all the time. <laughs> Anyway, I was like, I was like, I was like, we were actually pretty good friends. Like, like we would call and we would be friends. Like, you know, commentary figures always talk about friends. Because you got to talk about friends. But actually, like, legit, these were my friends. Uh, and they were like, man, I didn't know you white not you, you hated Warframe so much. Screw you. I don't watch any of you. Fuck. And, like, legit, they cut contact with me because I said something bad about Baro. But the funniest part was that they said that I should be grateful. These devs come into work every single day, regardless of what they do. And I was like, come on. Come fucking on. <laughs> And that is what I've always been afraid of whenever it came to Warframe. If I'd say something bad on stream, there'd be an archive of it. They'd come from a fucking life. <laughs> but no, I don't care. <laughs> because actually they came for my fuck. I mean, not for my fucking life ones. Imagine cutting ties over fucking Barricade. I know, right? <laughs> and, you, and, you, and, you, and you know what the fun, you know what the funniest part was? You know what the funniest part of that was? Two years later, two years later, two years later, I called the, well, actually I don't call the, I messaged this person, I messaged him, because Joey and I wanted to do something where we, um, included all the Warframe people or whatever, I messaged this person, I'm like, hey, what are your free graphic Warframes, I, I need it for a video, for, for like a, a project and do it with Joey Sarah, and they're like, man, I, I don't like Warframe, Warframe's like not good, devs aren't really working hard, there's no new content in the game, I'm like, <laughs> aren't you grateful that devs are coming into work? <laughs> uh, you know what? Tell them nerds to fuck up, dude. Like, legit. No, but, like, seriously, I did. Like, that's why I don't associate with that anymore. <laughs> but it's so funny. It is so funny. I had this one time. I had this one time. I don't know. I have no relation with this person at all. Never spoke with them. Never spoke with them since. They come up, okay? They come up. They come up, okay? I'm just here. I'm just here minding my own business. Doing nothing. Entertaining. Entertaining you guys. Just having fun. They come up. They come up on Twitter. They're like, they're ready. They're ready to fucking smash. I don't know what I did to them. I never know what it, because like, I have never spoken to them. I've never, ever, ever spoken to them. But they, but they come around. They're like, I'm, we're ready to smash. We're ready to smash, bro. You're coming down like, yo, why are you warfare partner? I'm like, why are you warfare partner? Because you can't be. Fuck you. Get out! They literally tweeted shit like that. Why are you a Warframe partner? You're shit. Basically, that's what that's what they were saying. And I was like, like what? <laughs> I was looking at in my mention. I was like, like what? So like I was like, yo, what do I what do I say? Why are you Warframe partner? Why are you exist? I'm like, come on, dude. Come on. Like what? Do I, like I I don't even know. I've never ever ever spoken with them. Never. And I tell you, they never watch my content. Like, I can tell. Like, I've never seen them. Anyway. Like, I send this I send this tweet to a couple of my friends because I'm like, yo, <laughs> watch this shit. And everyone just like kind of like starts defending me and like they, they get like yo, like what the fuck's your problem? I mean, like, I mean <laughs> I am legitimately in the pro in the program. It's it's just like a partner program between me and like like another company. It's not your business. And it's like I I've worked hard to deserve it. And they got mad and mad, and we had like, like big streamers, big streamers like King of Fallon, who I've never spoken with before, and like I probably didn't even know who I was. They were coming in and saying like, "Yo, chill out," because this is so unprofessional. Even the developers themselves had to step in and say like, "Yo, what the fuck's your problem?" It was so funny. <laughs> They're mad. They can't. Get I think they were partner. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I think they were. But like it was like, and that—that's that, the thing. That's the thing, and this all comes down back to like that, the like, like the start of, you know, this is why I was afraid of 
archiving my streams, why I never like started up a stream archive and why I had devs about it, because I was afraid someone would like go for this and then be like, oh, but like you said, Warframe boo boo. Oh, now we're gonna fucking hunt you down. I'm like, fuck no, fuck no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, the mentality behind the love of a video game is the same mentality people have when it comes to martial arts. People have been uh, training a worthless art like Kung Fu and Aikido gets so mad when you tell them the art is not effective. People have, hate to feel like their time and efforts have all been a waste. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true though. Okay, so like the thing which I found, the thing which I found, I'm really curious, like, do you guys do you guys share this as well? Do you guys like share this feeling too? Or like have you seen this? Because I've seen it with something I kinda see it with YouTube and Twitch too. Is that basically whenever um whenever like you start out and whenever like whenever you start out you're kind of you don't know anything and then you get kind of insecure about yourself because like you don't know anything and you realize very quickly like the moment you, you get more like Okay, so let's say I start right now with Apex Legends. I just started playing that game. Um, when I started playing Apex Legends, like, the first match, I think I'm fucking good. Because, like, I don't know how good everyone around me is. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll probably be pretty decent at it. And then, like, you go two or three matches in, and you're like, fuck, I'm so bad. Because, like, you don't, you, you see that other people are doing things that you don't understand. You don't know the map. You don't know where things are going. You don't know the, the movement systems of the game. So you'll, you'll kind of be like, fuck, I'm actually, like, really shit. But a setup was really good. So, um... You know, fuck the game, I had a bad game, oh, my controls are not working, ah, you know, you get that. So a lot of times, what you find is that the people who are most, like, focused on, I have the most money, I have the most, I'm the strongest, I'm better than you, especially like, oh, I'm better than you. Like, those are most of the time the people that know the least. Like, I have often found, especially when it comes to swimming, but also, sometimes when it comes to, like, making content, like, at least, like, the content creators that I've met, it's like, the people that know what they're doing, they're super chill because like 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 i don't know like, like, like the thing is like i don't care if like like legit if you start if you start a channel right now your channel overtakes me like dude fuck yeah fuck yeah fuck yeah i want to see more people like do this shit and like have fun with it make success about it like i love that shit but if i'm really really concerned about how people view me if i'm really really concerned about how people like watch me sort of think it's like if I'm like, oh man, I'm not do like I'm not doing good enough. Like, oh my god, someone else overtaking me. Urgh! Like that will be a problem. Did you know that Bloodhound was voiced by a female? No, I did not. I did not. I did not. I, 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 like I didn't like I, I, I did not even know who like they were voiced by. Then again, like a lot of uh, a, a lot of um, like anime as well, especially like European anime, like but also like Luffy, Naruto. Ash Ketchum, like, they were all voiced by females, too. Um, for, like, characters that are, like, clearly male. Bloodhound is non-binary, according to the devs. I mean, honestly, I don't know why people give a fuck. It's like, remember the time? <laughs> you remember that fucking time that the internet flipped its shit because Traitor turned out to, like, be gay? Like, people flipped their shit about that. And I'm like, who cares? Who fucking cares? <laughs> Oh man, like legit, that was like the weirdest shit. They wanted to create the first non-binary character in a major. Honestly, I don't give a fuck. Like, like seriously, like the thing is, I don't care. Cause like I'm not going to be looking at my characters and being like, hmm, getting a little sexual. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I'm not looking at characters like, dude. I remember. <laughs> I remember we had, oh my god, we had like people in Warframe that were like, yeah, dude, I I won't play female frames because, yeah, no, I don't do it. It's like, dude, the fuck? What the fuck's wrong? It's like, I just don't give a shit. Reactionaries, because it's just a fin fill for the bigotry. You're the fuck, you're missing out. <laughs> but it's like, it's that shit where I'm like, all this stuff, like, I don't, like, I don't get it. Like, because like there was some sort of comic like like with the with the tracer situation there was some sort of comic where like it was confirmed in the canon that uh, like tracer was gay and then literally like Russia banned anything with tracer <laughs> Russia was like fuck <laughs> ban that shit <laughs> they were like oh that that ass that tracer's ass for like the first couple of years totally fine go for it then it's a danger to our safety. <laughs> I'm like, what? 
the best part of being pansexual is that it doesn't matter which frames as I'm looking at. They don't have genders. All the frames are the same gen. I don't care. I don't care. Because, like, the gen. It's like, what? You want to fuck it? You want to fuck it? I mean, you can't in this game. So, I don't care. <laughs> It's like, it's like, I never, I never wondered about Mario's sexuality. I never wondered about Freddy Fish's sexuality. I never wondered about the cards in Solitaire's sexuality or gender. I didn't give a fuck. Minesweeper. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't care. It's like, I don't get why people are so obsessed about it. But it's like, it's like, uh, like, I'm all for it. Like, go for it. Like, go, go and, go and like... Like, 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 whatever lore fits your character, fucking go for it. And, like, but Bloodhound, it fits, because, like, who knows what, blood, what Bloodhound is. It's, like, Bloodhound is very, very mass beyond everything. And, honestly, I'm, like, I think Bloodhound is, like, literally my main, if not overtaken by Octane. Also, Warframes look infested, uh, like, infested on the inside. Yep. You probably, if you, if you get a little, if you get a little sexual with a Warframe, it's, like, you prob probably wouldn't be good. Probably wouldn't be a great time. Probably wouldn't be a great time. Pro you probably don't want to even go there with your mind. I, I don't know why you want to go there with your mind. It's like, I mean, that, that's up to you. You can't. You can get a little sexual. But people still want to. People still want to. Right? Well, they're stable infestation, to be fair. Why? I don't know. We can that we know of. <laughs> people have tried. <laughs> Oh, man, people have... <laughs> people are still searching for methods. Actually, we should call on our expert. We should call on an expert on Warframe pornography. Cole James. He actually researched this topic very well until YouTube struck him down, because... He can't talk about you. How do you know Ballas lost his dick? <laughs> oh, man. That's Russia for you, dude. The mighty states of masculine men terrified of lesbian ass. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. Uh, but it's like, oh uh, man, I think like I think that shit's just funny. And again, context, guys. It's like I'm not saying like you can have whatever you want. If you want, if you want to have whatever character with whatever lore in your game, go for it. It's your game. It's your story. If you want to believe that whatever character is whatever sexuality, gender, fuck all, go for it. Your fantasy. I'm not stopping you. I don't care. He lost his dick. Ask Toretta's about that. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, honestly, like, those are things where just like, I don't give a fuck. Cryo! I'm lurking, but where be me titty pics? <laughs> 42 moms. God damn, dude. Have you seen him after the Chimera prologue? Didn't he have like some sort of feature in... Like that uh, area quest, which is like some sort of like cinematic thing between the real Jack stuff. I think he was there too. Let me see. I won't get in trouble with this. Warframe era quest. To be fair, I do want to see progression picks because you're looking fucking buff recently. <laughs> uh, that worker is paying out. Actually, like I've been, I've actually been not working out that all that much uh, this week because I've been really, really busy. So actually, like the thing is like, the thing is, like, I was I, I was watching a bit of uh, I was watching a bit of Rio uh, today, um, and he was like, "Yeah, I've been working out." I was like, flexing. Like, I never I, like I would I, like I never flex because like I think it's dumb. But if we ever want to have a flexing battle, like I should probably work out a little bit more. But I should, but I, but, I, but I think I can I can fight that quite good. Uh, Misha is always fucking buff, but he refuses to show me. Cause like I think I think it doesn't look great. Like like I think it looks. It's this thing that we were talking about, where it's like, if you're, if you're a fucking noob in a game, you're like, oh man, I, I gotta be strong. I gotta show I'm strong. And then when you when you get to like, like fucking MR30, it's like you don't wanna, you don't care. So it's like if I go and say you're like, oh man, I'm so strong. Ah, I'm so strong. It's like, what the fuck? Like, like, what do you expect people? Like, like it, it just feels weird. It doesn't, it, it, it feels weirder to me than it does to anyone. Because, because, because it doesn't feel like a, a show of I'm strong. It, it feels like, oh, I'm so insecure. Please feel good about that. I'm strong. I'm glad you don't care, but I'm first seeing them. To be fair, we never mentioned anything about flexing. <laughs> I know, but 
Like that's that's what I see a lot of people do. They're like, oh yeah, I've been working out, look, looking how strong I'm getting. I'm like, dude. I don't care. But I think it's good you're working out. I think it's good people working out. Working out is good. Working out is good. Keep going. Keep going. Let's see, the era quest cinematic. I don't know what her was in there. Yeah. Quench our first. Well, the bottle's empty. Got no moist water anymore, so I can't give you any water. Fortunately, you'll have to go get your own. <laughs> we are but husks in this the desert of lackluster man. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Man, uh, Craig, how have you been doing, man? That was everything, man. Dickless Ballas. Oh man. Indeed. That is indeed Dickless Ballas. <laughs> Big oof. Big fucking oof. Honestly, like, Ballas was a character I was actually rather interested in because, like, he, he appeared to be super strong. He had survived, like, such an insanely long time from, like, the old war days. And then, like, he showed up once, tried to be mysterious, then he fucked around with. Um, Umbra. He fucked around with Umbra because reasons. And then, like, we stabbed him once. He wasn't even showing off his true power or anything. It was just, like, stabbed him. I was like... And then he turned into fucking this. And, like, over, like, for the last three years, he's just been fucking this. He's just been pathetic. And it's like... I wanted to know more about this character. I wanted to see this character be... Like, why was he so feared? Why was he able to subdue Umbra? Why was he strong? Like, showed up. Space Mom did that. Then he gets checked. That's not us. I know, but still. It's like... Interesting character now. Like, I like, I was really curious to see, like, what was going on with Balas. And now I'm kind of like... Also because it's been taking, like, for a fucking forever to get there. Oh, that's kind of thing about or or can They were immortal, but not powerful. No, not really. Not on the individual level. Yeah. But we're gonna see when a new war drops. When the new war drops. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. But yeah. Aspirinus, how you day going, man? You joined like in the middle of that rant. I'm sorry about that. We or like the, the commentary video vibes, because we were talking about uh we we're talking about like uh yeah. Back to Michelle's ass. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble with Twitch, okay? I'm like, I'm like super, super, like, I wouldn't say scared of it. I just don't want to like get in trouble. Um, like the thing is, is like, I see so many people just sell play like copyrighted stuff or like watch videos online, which are like clearly just like shows and shit. I'm kind of like, how are you not getting in trouble? Like, how are you like, like, especially because like most of them are, like partner streams. I, like, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to get in trouble. I don't want anyone to be taken down. But I'm really curious as like how their philosophies are, especially when they're making so much money. It's like, if this is your main source of income, like, like that, that that's that, that's the way I'm kind of like treating it. In the sense of, even though this is this is not like for my main income sort of thing, even though like I'm not treating this for the money, I do want to make sure that it, that if. I earned money. I don't have it taken away because I made some stupid fault and like I got striked by DMC and soon. Mostly because it seems like Twitch's policy is where and when they personally see it. <laughs> oh man. There's always Instagram. Instagram is something like vlogs. Well, I'll probably start posting there more when like COVID ends. Because the thing with, with Instagram is... So like right now, like I can't do vlogs and I can't do Instagram because like what, what do I do? Like I, I've seen a lot of streamers Instagram where like... My stream setup, my stream chair, my microphone, going live. My stream chair, my microphone, my setup, going live. It's like, it's the same shit every day. And it's like, I don't, I don't think it's interesting. I don't think that that's in any way fascinating because it's just the same room that you see right here. Um, so then, like, I could picture anything that I go outside. Well, first of all, I barely go outside. And that's also why I can't make vlogs right now because, like, I'm here. Fucking here. And I'm not gonna like take ten different shots of me sitting down in a chair because I think that's kind of weird. Um, however, 
even the, the few times that I do go outside, because I do like to go for walks, I do, go, I do like to go out for runs. I have had times in which I would go out and just take a walk in the park. Very regular stuff. And I've had people just flip their shit over that. People literally flip their shit to me because, like, I went for a walk in the park. Like, that was just, like, not even, like, social media. Just people I talked to. I was like, yeah, I just went for a walk. How dare you go for a walk? Because that's not, that's, you can't do that. You're doing a danger. I'm like, dude, it's what in the government world. It's like, no, but, like, you shouldn't because that's dangerous. And I get it. Like, I'm really, really careful when it comes to, like, the virus. But, like, one thing which I'm kind of afraid of, especially when it comes to vlogs. So, first of all, like, I'm not really doing anything interesting. And if I'm then going to vlog that I'm outside, like, let's say I'm doing something which is, like, breaking in your rules or something. Seeing how itchy people are about this. I don't think it's worth it because like first of all nothing interesting is happening but second of all like even if i were to like think of something which might be interesting in the vlog which literally there really isn't right now it's like yeah um i could just get in trouble like it's, it's the same thing with twitter uh stream walk um that would eat my data basically like right here in like holland like i don't get 5g either this is something which i don't get about 5g and stuff people are like oh my god with 5g like you can really like have fast internet it's like okay sweet like for scrolling twitter you're not gonna notice the difference no but it's like for streaming and downloading videos and downloading apps it's like yeah sweet but like i have like a 2000 megabyte limit like we like we all have megabyte limits there is like so many megabytes you can use in your phone plan and if you want to have more megabytes you're gonna have to pay up more and they're gonna be insanely expensive so yeah everyone just downloads it over wi-fi anyway so why would you want to have 5g because if you're only gonna have like two gigs to download things from i mean i'm never downloading an app i'm never streaming i'm never like watching videos or anything from my mobile data if i'm up because i'll just eat my mobile data and it will be insanely expensive i just don't get 5g why like I, I love that there's like a new iteration i'm all in for that new technology but it makes no sense with the way that phone plans are set up. When when like mo the 3G came out and like you could use internet, it was unlimited. I can get it. If you have unlimited data, I can get it. But at the same time, there's so much Wi-Fi around, so like I don't get it either. You have unlimited? Dude. Jealous. Jealous fucking much. Because we had like here in Holland, basically what they had, 3G came out, it, data was unlimited. That lasted for two years. Then they were like, fuck, we can make money on this. And then like 500 megabytes was like 15 bucks a month. 750. 30. A gig. 35. Something like that. But my data slows down is 20 gigs. Dude, 20 gigs is still a lot. I have like 2 gigs at most. Um, but I never get for it because, I mean, I use this thing as my phone. And uh, this doesn't have data on it because it's a Nokia. And at the same time, like, I'm always at a Wi-Fi place, so yeah. Barely go outside and still uh, still somehow more, tan, more fucking tan than I am. The sun where you are must be something else. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, God, I hate corporations. Well, I mean, you can always live in Canada. Apparently, like, Canada, like, you pay 300 a month for phone servers. Like, it's insanely expensive. So, we still get a good end of the deal. We just don't need to... We just shouldn't, like, use data. So. If I had unlimited connection, I would probably stream... Like, I, I could probably stream at conventions and stuff. Like, that'd be sweet. I, I would actually, like... I would actually love to have this right here. What is it? Um... I was actually thinking about this today. Are you down for some Apex later? Um, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I don't know if I have a lot of time. Also, let me uh, let me let me let me catch your chat message because like I kind of skipped that. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. My day is going well. Well, just got off the phone with a lawyer. Looks like I'm going to be suing an old employer. Damn. I'm also going to get my second vaccine shot in a few hours. Damn, dude. <laughs> That's uh, exciting. Uh, I don't hear about like lawsuits for an old employer every day. Probably. Shouldn't tell me anything about it, because most of the time, like, when it comes to losses, I've never had one, luckily. But most of the time, they say, like, don't say anything about it, so I'm not going to ask you anything about it, but, like, hopefully. Yeah, I need to play Apex. I love Apex. I fucking love it. I think it's great. But, yeah, this right here is a, um... This right here is a phone which, like, I absolutely love. In the U.S., suing employers is pretty... Really? Wow. Like, we barely see a courtroom here, ever. This right here is the Sony Xperia Pro. And this phone right here... I've shown it before. This phone has a um, HDMI port. Um, I want to build a house in Canada. 
Uh, I've had at least three to four class action lawsuits payouts. Damn. Canada's nice, but it's very close to America. Oh, man. But, like, so the, the idea of this phone is that you can, like, plug in HDMI, like, an HDMI capture cord sort of thing. Like, that's what it is. Like, right here, you have your USB-C port, and this right here is where your HDMI port is. So you can just use a regular camera to stream with, and you can use this to, like, transmit data. So, like, that's kind of, like, the way that this has been set up. And then, like, it has, like, it's been built for this. So, right here, you can kind of, like, see the use case of it. Now I'm going to play Apex because of you. You should! You should! Apex is fun! Oh, I, I had such a good game today again as, like, Octane. Oh my god! Like, I'm getting wins now, which, like, like I'm really happy with. But yeah, like, the idea is you can, like, snap the phone there, you can plug in the HDMI cable. They, they need to put a high-quality mobile processor directly in, in a camera. They could, but there is a bit of a problem there. First of all... Like, I think that this might actually be a better solution. Why? Because, number one, is that cameras are generally quite long useful. Like, this right here is a Rebel T6i, which I still use, and I think it's still quite very useful. This camera has come out, like, a couple of years, like, quite a few years ago. Actually, let's see if I can find when this thing came out. Let's see here. Um, T6 Canon Rebel T6i. Let's see when this came out. It came out in 2015. February 6, 2015. T6i came out in... Came out in let's see. Smartphones of 2015. Samsung Galaxy S6. Now, you could still use a, a Samsung Galaxy S6, but it's going to be a lot worse than the phones you can buy today. So... Cameras don't develop as fast as phones. So, like, if you're going to put, like, phone stuff in a camera, it's really going to date it. At the same time, it's going to be more expensive because you're going to have to put phone stuff in a camera. Um, and a lot of times, like, when when, when when I see people try it, like, they, they try it for this hybrid, which never really works. So, what I find is that if you want to have this hybrid, it's not going to be as good. It's going to be a compromise, whereas... Like, this thing allows you to, basically, the way that I have my capture cord set up, I can plug in any camera to it, whichever camera I want. And that is something which is really nice, because, um, at that point in time, like, you can decide, okay, I want to use this camera, I want to use this camera. Also, you can swap cameras. So, this camera right here, um, you can swap lenses, which is a really good thing. Like, not every camera is allowed, like, can't, can't swap lenses, so maybe, like, if you have a camera with a fixed lens with a mobile processor in it, you're fucked. If you want to have, like, a small, like, 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 a wide angle or very, like, zoomed in angle. But this camera right here has great autofocus, but it also has like a very colored picture. So what do I mean with a color picture? Uh, let me see if I can show you. Let me see if I can show you what I mean with a color picture. So like I used a little bit when it comes to... Uh... Actually, I don't know if I use this on this picture. Um... Let's see, what do I find here? Where is this? I don't know... Do I have to um uh, here? Let's say oh here it's just this thing here. Okay, let me see if I can. Let me see. Let, let, let me see if I have anything applied here. Um. Okay, so so what you see right here? Let me show you this. So like this right here is like the standard, the the standard like footage that comes from this camera, and this right here is with a bit of a filter applied. Now as you can see, like it doesn't really do much. Because, like, this is a webcam, so you can't really do much with it. So the only thing that you see is that it just, like, it makes the the dark, the darker spots, especially right here, like, pop a little bit more. Like, it just gives a little bit more... I like it. Like, it just changed the picture just a little bit. But what you find with this camera right here, this has, like, a very flat picture. So let me see if I can go and swap here. So this right here, um, if I go this way... Fuck, let me move that. So this right here is, like... This camera, and if I then go to, uh, let's see here, if I go here, if I go filters, so what you find here is that this right here is the base of this camera, okay? So this right here is like the, the picture as it comes out of this camera, and this is with two filters applied. So you see that there is a difference in color, and that's because like this picture 
that the, this camera provides is very very flat so because of that like i can do a lot of like color correction i don't do a lot on like on like um on on the stream because like i kind of like I, like i just do this so it's kind of similar to um to the webcam right here so you see like it just, it just punches out the colors just a little bit more like this i like it um but especially when it comes to like color uh, color correcting like this camera is amazing to work with this camera isn't because this camera does great auto footage but like because of that like you can't really work with the colors and that's a bit of a problem especially when it comes to um like when it comes to your use case if i want to shoot a vlog this is broken because i don't need to do any color processing it just looks good but if i want to like have a multi-cam setup or if i want to like like make sure that the color looks perfect every single time i need to have something more like this and if you have one camera with like one mobile processor in it it's like you're only limited to that camera whereas like with my capture card camera i can plug in whatever camera i want for whatever case i only need to have one phone that has this thing and i can use any camera i want with it now obviously it's still an accessory so i get where you're coming from but like i think that that is something yeah uh cameras could develop as fast as phones they just don't because they set the precedent that they will hold back taking cameras that's why some don't do such a great job dis uh disrupting the camera scene samsung tried releasing a camera with android and mobile tech and it didn't do well but i believe they were on the right track so what i think with the mobile scene is that the mobile scene isn't really all that all, all that much developing like seriously so if you look at this phone right here by the way rip lg lg is dead LG stopped making smartphones. I like LG. I like their phones right here. Um, but if you look at like their latest phone, the, the, their last phone that they released. This is the last conventional phone they released, which is right here. Which is the LG V60. And this right here is the LG V30. This is three generations behind this phone. What you find is that this phone has uh, two more cameras, which honestly, I don't give a fuck about. I have one... Um, Hold on. I have one wide angle and I have one normal camera. More than enough. I don't really need to zoom in on things. I don't need to do crazy stuff with this. Um, so, other than that, it has a hole punch camera right here in the middle. Like, one of these notches. I hate that. I, I don't think it looks good. I think this looks way cleaner. But so, it only has one camera up front. Like, I think what it might have is an under display fingerprint reader. Which, honestly, I don't care about. It has, like, probably, like, a, a, an, a, a, an assistant button. I think still has a headphone jack, which this thing has, and then it has a faster processor, and it has uh, what else does it has? Like it, like it has this thing, which is like uh, it has a case you can plug it into, so you have two displays, which is pretty cool. But that's an accessory. So like that's all like most of like the big innovation that's happened with these phones over three generations, three years. Basically, like most things that have been done with phones have already been done. So what you'll see is that like sometimes they'll do something weird. Like I love LG for this, and I fucking hate that they are shutting down. Because you have right here the LG Wing. Fuck, I love this thing. Like, the fact, like, this right here, the idea is, is that you have a regular phone, you can flip it open like this, so you have, like, a vertical thing, and, like, that's great. Um, it doesn't have a headphone jack, so that's, like, immediately a no-go for me, but otherwise I would have fucking gotten this. Because it's also not that expensive, it's, like, 750 750 750 while, like, a just ran standard Samsung smartphone is, like, 1100 And this is, like, a standard phone, but then it does something weird. Um... But yeah, like I don't think that there is that many there are that many developments every single year with phones to really justify that it updates every single year. I think it's more updates every single year so that people like buy new phones. I don't really care about like buying new phones. Like if cameras, like if cameras, like if they're really holding back technology, that sucks. But I don't know if there'd be like something to improve. When I'm talking about a phone development, I'm talking about CPU, GPU, and software. That could be in camera, that could be put in cameras, not the science or other things. For example, battery tech has been the same for cameras, uh, yet it's improved constantly in phones. That is true. That is true. Um, but one like one thing which I think might hold back cameras, though like I am, actually there's no battery in here. Um, let me see if I can find my battery. Let's see. What is this? What is here and what's in here? Um... Do you have any specifications on here? Yeah, rechargeable lithium ion. Yeah, so actually, I don't know why they why they're not making this bigger. Like one thing that I was thinking about is maybe form factor, because like one thing that might that, that might influence phones is like how like what they do with the size of their batteries, uh, and like how much smaller they make the motherboards. Because I think that, that 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 you're looking kind of at like two, um, you're looking at a couple of things. So if I wanted to sign a new battery like this, um, 
Like, there is only one development that I can use on this, which is battery technology. Like, the energy density, if I can make energy more dense than this battery, then that is all I can improve on. Because I can't really change the shape of this battery. Because that's one thing camera users love, is having the same battery. And if a company comes out with a different form battery that doesn't fit in their newest camera, they hate it because they'll have, like... Probably shouldn't drop that. They'll have thousands of these, or hundreds of these, or tens of these, which they all use, and they love interchanging them with cameras. Like, Sony cameras have batteries, which also go in these LED lights that I have. Like, people that use cameras love having the same batteries for everything, so if they change that, they hate it. However, you're only, like, you can only go with, like, the battery capacity. Like, you can only, like, increase, like, the, the, the battery energy density. In phones, every year they design a new phone, so you don't just have, like, the battery density you also, or the energy density you also have hey what if we can find a way to like stack the motherboard make it smaller what if we find a way to remove features make it smaller what if we find a way to like expand the phone a little bit and then give it more space so you also have like other innovations that can increase the battery capacity which do doesn't necessarily have to do with just the battery itself i think that that might be a thing but then again i am not very well, well studied on this i don't know i legit don't know so this is just me guessing this is just my uh my my feelings of what might be so yeah camera companies are based off of the customer base they hate change photographers want their lenses batteries accessories like mics to all work on their old bodies with a lens collection i think that's just because it's so one false one very expensive and two um well it's, it's one it's very expensive it's just like because like every everything is very expensive uh you don't want to change everything out and you don't want to like buy all new accessories so what i have right now is if i wanted to like get a new camera Let's say I wanted to have a new camera right here. I would just want to have a camera that sits on the same stand that like plugs in the same way to my computer. If I want to have a new microphone, I want to have a microphone that plugs in here. And I don't want to have to buy a brand new mixer board or brand new like. So I think that that also comes in there. That's just like because everything is so goddamn expensive. It's like you want things to just slot in and efficiency. Like that's what you find. That's what I think like MacBooks are used for mostly is because they're very efficient. Even though they don't offer the best features, even though they break all the time, they're they're like made to like die in two years sort of thing. People buy them or use them in their businesses because number one, they don't crash as much as Windows. Number two, they don't force updates on you like Windows, which can make you lose all your progress. Number three, like there's an entire ecosystem of accessories that goes with it. And number four, like there's a lot of workflows that it has been very well integrated with where if you, I think like, they also have a great like time machine sort of thing where if you have a MacBook backed up, you can like place that on anything. So um, I think it's just like the easeability of use in uh, in business, and I think that you find it a lot with business is that the easier it is to use something, uh, or like the more efficient it is, like that saves like like people will spend money on that because it will it will cost them more time and thus money because time is money. It will cost them more time and money to like go in for like the better alternative. That they're like, just give me whatever it costs, just something good that I don't need to worry about. And that's the way they work. And I can get behind that. Like, I mean, like, I find that too when it comes to uh, stream stuff, when it comes to computers. It's like, what I found with this computer right here, I bought it for like about, about a thousand bucks pre built in 2016. It served me quite well, but it also has like had a lot, lot of problems. I mean, like, I still have whenever I'm streaming, I can't open up certain things. Like, we've had a stream crash last week. We. Uh, I have when I'm making videos. Sometimes I just need to like save and reload or watch the CPU. It costs me so much time. If I can have a computer that's like two or three times the price, but I never have to worry about that, fucking I'll buy it. But I can't buy it right now because like shortages. So I think that that's a lot with camera companies, especially when you come into like the more expensive segment because uh, regular people aren't necessarily always buying this. They're more buying like actually cam like casual cameraing has really gone down. Casual cameraing. Casual cameras. I've really like gone down in like market uh, market segment. I think because everyone's just like taking pictures on their phones, and that looks good. So why would you buy a camera if you're not like gonna shoot movies with it? I mean, like you can shoot movies with your phone. Like why would you? It's weird. That, like yeah, that changed. That, that that has changed a lot, and I don't think it's been very good for like consumer cameras. Anyway, anyway, that was a lot of consumer. <laughs> That was a lot of talk about very various different things. And we've been on ball. We've been going on for three fucking hours almost. Damn, boy. Damn. We've been just chatting for very, very long. <laughs> lovely, 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 lovely. But yeah. I love it, man. Great start of the weekend. So, um, let's see. Have you seen the, the, see the 360 GoTo camera? Hold on. The 360 GoTo? 
I've seen the 360 GoPro. Um. Oh no, I've seen this. I have seen this. So this right here is like a an Instagram 360 camera. This is so fucking tiny. I like the idea is that you can like. I've seen this. I don't know if I would like rely on it as like a useful like creator creator camera. Probably wouldn't shoot my videos with it, but it would be a fun thing to try out. That's for sure. Let's see how, how expensive it is. Can I buy it here anywhere? 200 bucks. Damn. I bought a DJI Osmo Pocket, but I might want to buy one of these instead. Let's see. This is 200 bucks. GoPro Max 360, yeah, that is two times more expensive. And uh, what was the other one? DJI Osmo Pocket. This one. See, like, I like I've not tried this, so I can't really give my I can't really give my opinion on it. The thing which I do find, when it comes to like cameras that are like this that are really really small, like they compromise hard because like the thing is, cameras have um. Hold on. Cameras work with this basic idea of like. You need to have a, you have like a big sensor. You have a big sensor to capture a lot of light because the more light you like can capture, um, the more detailed and the better your, your, your picture will be. So like, it is good to have like the most light into your, into your camera. So that like, that's why you'll see like the more expensive cameras will have like really big sensors. If you want to make a really, if you want to make it tiny, you're going to sacrifice quality. And that's what you find in phone cameras is that phone cameras will never be as good as this because they try and cram all of this size into like such a small thing it will never be as good but it will be acceptable it will never be as good um so when it comes to quality like if i look at really small cameras the way that i look at it is like you're gonna compromise quality over size because like you want to have something which is really small and then you're gonna try and like from that really small thing see like how good you can make it and they'll probably make it rather good so like i'm not gonna say if you want to like make it for just personal use if you want to like use it for uh making a like personal vacation video sort of thing or whatever um like i'm not gonna not recommend it because I've, I've not even tried it myself so most of the time like it will probably be quite good just in the same way that like a 1080p video will do perfectly fine for people no one really needs to have 4k on their family vacation videos because no one cares um however i think that when it comes to size like i already find that when it comes to video um, the wide angle of a GoPro already suffers a little bit compared to this, which is just like a straight angle. So like, if you really want to have like a, the greatest quality in like your picture, this kind of suffers. That said, I would take this GoPro over this camera right here. If you just want to like have a camera just for fun, because the thing which I find is that this right here, I feel personally is small enough. It's like, if I were to go with smaller, like the 360, which is like apparently like really, really small. It's like this right here still has a decent sized sensor. I like the quality and it's really fast. Like I can, can click on here and like it will start to like record. Whereas this thing, I will have to like start up and only now I can record. And this thing is like click and record. And this one doesn't have moving parts and this thing is smaller. So I would take like, I think that like a, a GoPro is like a really great compromise. For pictures, it's not a good compromise. Like if you want to go pitch and video, get one of these, which are great too. But like, yeah, so I'd love to try them. I'd love to try them. Like right now, the, the, the budget isn't there yet where I can make videos where like, oh, let me get a $200 device and just like test it out. That's not entirely there yet, <laughs> but I hope at some point it will be because I really want to, I would really love to like go over this. Yeah, I like the GoPro as well, but I'm looking for a simple walk and hiking around adventure camera. Yeah, I can see that. For my Hawaii vacation. I mean, like I use this right here for my vacation. If you get a grip underneath this, like that can work too, but 
look like look what's best look what's best for like your own use case because um i mean like i have only tried these cameras so you see right here i don't have more experience than these other cameras because i haven't tried them so i can't give you an opinion about that so look look for reviews look for whatever other people have said um i hope at some point in time i can be your source for camera information and all that sort of stuff but uh that's gonna take some time <laughs> gonna have to build out a main channel a little bit further for that but maybe at some point maybe at some point so yeah that's kind of what I'm looking for at some point. Like, it's kind of what I'm looking for. I want to do, I want to cover more tech as well, but I want to, yeah. There is time restraints and there's also just things where I'm like, you know, let's just. Things, things, things will come with time. Things will come with time. Um, I'm not doing this for the money, but at the, at the same time, there was a time in which I just spent ridiculous amounts of money at this and I don't want to do that. Like, I think that's dumb. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to like I don't want to have like spend a budget of like 500 bucks per video and like get like nothing back like I'm like yeah uh, I'm not quite ready to do that yet <laughs> that doesn't seem like the smartest idea to me yet but anyway that's it for me I think um, we've been on for three hours um, do you guys want to go anywhere or just show just end it we might just end it. Um, Next week, we're probably going to be playing a lot more Apex. Maybe tomorrow I might play something like I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, for sure, I'll see you all guys back on Monday. Um, if you want to install Apex, get it. It's free. Um, it is a battle royale, I know, but they're planning, they're thinking about other game modes, and it's fun to play. Like, seriously, I'm not a battle royale person. I really like it. Um, I'm more than happy to like take you on, die together, win together, whatever we're going to do. It's fun. So get it if you want to. It's cross-play platform you don't need to have any paid things on consoles for it so you're cool we'll play it like well we're never like i'm not gonna main apex but i'm probably gonna play more on stream anyway i want to go to bed yeah me too <laughs> me too man all right i'll see you guys all around have a great uh, rest of the rest of the night uh, i might but i think i have a cold coming on so you should like take your rest and not start playing battle royals if you have a cold coming on anyway i'll see you all around um I'm probably going to be MIA for the next week or so. Oh, man. I hope the cold is really not that bad. But uh, do what you need to do to uh, to recover. Do what, Like, always do what you need to do to, like, feel best sort of thing. It's, like, the, the thing which I feel, and, like, I'm, I'm probably going to get... Like, I, I'm, it's probably not smart for me to say this, but the thing which I feel is that you should do what's best for you. And if that doesn't include the stream, then it doesn't include the stream. Like, I don't ever want this to be an obligation the same way that Warframe became an obligation for me. Um, cause like, this is also the reason why I don't do like business, like I, I, my business plan for like YouTube and Twitch is shit, why I don't ask for money. Cause the thing which I feel is I'm kind of greedy. Okay. The thing that I want is I don't want you to just be around for the stream. I don't want you to want to watch I don't want you to watch a stream because we're playing a game. I want you to watch the stream because you think the stream is fun. Or I want you to watch the stream because you think I might be fun to like watch. I want whatever I'm doing, whatever it is I'm doing. I want you to be down to like watch it or like be, be down to be around with it. So that's why I am like, but that's why my idea is like, I want you guys, if you're watching this, I want you to be happy. I just want you to have fun here. I just want to make sure that like you can be, you're the best you can be. Because I think that if I prey on you being in a bad state sort of thing, if I pray on like, hey, please don't get healthy. Don't, don't better yourself, but instead watch my stream. Like, I'm going to be impacting you in a bad way. And at a certain point in time, you're not dumb. You're not dumb. You're going to realize, hey, this person is telling me to sup and give him all, give him all my money, which I can also spend on improving myself. I'm going to try and improve myself. He says, no, 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 go back to my stream. That person is against me. Fuck it, I'm out. I don't want you to say, fuck it, I'm out. I want you to stick around for the journey, regardless of what we do. Whether we do Warframe, whether we do, like, cameras, whether we do, like, whatever streams. I want you to be around for it, because I think it's fun. And like I'm kind of greedy. I like 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 I I, I want I want I want to have I want to have my 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 community. But like I think it's way more valuable if you guys are just the best people you can be, and you just like here when you feel comfortable. So like I'm not gonna say, oh man, like you should really come back to the stream. It's like like retro came in today. He's like, oh yeah, sorry I missed some series. Dude, don't worry. Like I have the obligation that I put it to myself. I'll be streaming here every day. If you want to join in, I'm very happy if you join in. But if you if you if you're going to go on and do something with your life, go do something with your life. Go 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 do anything you want. And whenever like you want to come back to the stream, I'm here. But I'm not gonna say like, oh, you gotta be here. I'm mad. It's like that's ridiculous because then like 
Like, I, like either I'm having a negative impact on your life, which means that you want to leave, or I'm forcing you out because you want to have your own life. You have your own life. I know. I'm just a segment of your life. And that's the way it should be. So, no, I agree. Just like, you know. Yeah, no, like, like I, like, I kind of want to, like, I thought it would be, like, a good thing to, like, mention because... Sometimes people wonder, like, oh man, like, why do you, why, like, like, why, why do you, why do you not like money? <laughs> Where Espino said it, like, yeah, I'm the streamer that doesn't like money. It's like, I, I do like money. I'm like, I'm like everyone. I like money. <laughs> it's like, if you were to ask me, like, do you want to have money or not? I'd say, sure, give me money, because I can do fun, fun things with money. But I don't think money is worth the, um, the, like, negative repercussions to any of you. Like, I don't want to, like, that, they, and at the same time, I don't think, like, my success is worth any negative repercussions to you and i think that it's better like i'd rather have a community that is like improving themselves and like that's better than they were like two years ago sort of thing because i think that's way cooler and it's way more awesome uh than have a fan base that's like watching everything but because they're watching everything they're sacrificing their own health they're sacrificing their own progression they're sacrificing their own financial situation because that that, that was just at the end of the day that collapses and you like you kind of see that with warframe where people push themselves so far to continue to play that game and at a certain point in the, in the time they just collapse and i feel that if warframe i mean if like let's say that i had a different attitude around warframe where i wasn't like oh i want to i need to see everything about this game or i need to play everything in this game or all that sort of stuff if i did not have that i probably i might still be playing it today but i probably wouldn't have made a youtube channel right but like i probably would still be playing it today or like would probably be playing like a lot more because like i would just be like very casual i'm like oh yeah you know i'll play it later I wouldn't have this idea around it. So that's kind of like my idea around it. Anyway, we're on three hours live. It's been a long time. So I'm going to wish you all a very happy weekend. Enjoy your time um, for like the coming two days and have a lot of fun. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Or no, not tomorrow. Monday for the stream. So have fun. See you around. And uh, thank you all for uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed.